So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome to the Fanfic Club. So we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto became the Shogun of the Great Western Empire. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. A regal looking young man no older than 19 years of age with long spiking blonde hair wearing a burnt orange sleeveless overcoat with black flame edging along the bottom of the coat. Under the coat he wore black samurai armor with light tone orange edging over a pair of gray pants and shirt. Staring at the rock garden losing himself to peaceful moment he finger a green stone necklace he wore around his neck. Six years it had been six eventful years ever since his banishment from Konoha after nearly killing himself, to bring back the last Uchiha, Sasuke instead of a, welcome back, or even a, thank you. His reward was scorn and banishment, the reason, releasing the nine-tailed fox's chakra and the attempted killing of the Uchiha even if said Uchiha had transformed into monster with two giant hands like wings from that seal the snake Teme and willingly using the damn thing to kill him. Now this didn't hurt him, he was glad to be away from the spiteful village, but what hurt him was that everyone he thought he could trust, everyone he thought was his friends and family, betrayed him. Tsunade the old hag had scowled him for the wounds Sasuke had received, I had to hold back despite being badly injured himself, with a hole the size of a fist in his chest she didn't even finish healing him stating the fox can repair the rest of the damages, and told him off on his stupidly. His sensei, Hitaki Kakashi the worthless Teme who told him those who abandoned their teammate or trash, had left him to rot. His teammates, Sakura the pink-haired slut, had shunned him, Sasuke the traitor rammed his lighting infused hand into his chest, spoke volumes as did the entire rookie nine, team guy and most of all, Uruka, his big brother, and Jerry a useless peeping Tom, his so-called godfather. The only one who never betrayed him was Hanada, in fact, she was at his side every moment up to the day he left confessed her love to him only before his banishment that hurt him deeply. It still hurts him to know he could now never return her feelings. Shortly after he left Tsunade had told the whole village of Naruto's dark secret, in the hope of making his friends see him as a hero, had backed fired now they see him as a threat that needed to be locked away or killed. All that drinking must rotted her brain so he was sure Hinata would hate him as well but he wasn't sure after hearing what happened after he left to the western lands it seemed he had a lot pull with others and he didn't even know it or it was kept from him. When news of his banishment reached waves, spring, Suna every country and ninja villages he went to on missions instead of damning him they closed ranks behind him some even tried to find him and offered him a place within their nations or village. Unable to find him the counties and hidden villages broke all agreements with Konoha and the land of fire, Suna and waves threatened to return any Konoha ninja found trespassing on their lands in a box and maybe with air holes or in Suna's case a matchbox with Gara's way in handling unwanted guests. Fire Demio was less than pleased with Konoha when word of Naruto's banishment reach him followed by every treaty fire had gained thanks to Naruto been torn up. Fire Demio knew who his mother and father were and owned them for saving his life once he believed Konoha would take care of Naruto Fox or no Fox, it seems he had been far too trusting in Konoha and having failed to check up on Naruto. Fire Demio may have been a bit foppish at times he was man of honor and felt the need to atone for his inaction and loss of face with the other Demios. After heading straight to the disgrace of ninja village with his bodyguards and army of samurai he ordered Konoha not to send hunter nins after him while he tore them a new asshole and slashed their funding to make up for the lost trade. Naruto soon realized how blind he was when he was out of the village for good, it was like the wool had been removed from his eyes, he could see clearly. Now, compared to popular belief, he wasn't the loud idiot he made himself out to be. It was a mask he wore as a self-defense to use against the villagers who hurt him over the years it even fooled him at times. Now he had no need for it, and so he was free. He also found out his heritage before his banishment, how, a small scroll that somehow mysteriously appeared in his apartment, he could remember how shocked he was to find out he was the son of the fourth Hokage, Konoha's yellow flash, Namikaze Minato, and, red hot-blooded habanero, Uzumaki Kashina and second host of the Nine Tails who made the very seal that held the Nine-Tailed Fox with their own blood and chakra. Besides yellow and red make orange and he did like orange a lot must run in the blood. After learning this had strengthened his hatred towards Konoha, how much more had it kept from him, the old man Hokage's letter on how he begged for his forgiveness in failing, much of his regrets on his mistake of informing the village about him and his father last request to be seen as a hero, 
and how the village elders forayed him from giving him his heritage, they even wanted to make him a mindless weapon. It wouldn't had happened if that masked ninja hadn't kidnapped his mother who held the fox and controlled Kayubi to attack the village. The scroll also contained the family fortune and the scrolls of his father and mother, including the scrolls of the Uzumaki sealing arts, which now he is a master of. But he wasn't alone on his travels, the very demon inside of him was his closest friend, at first Kayubi was still the rage-filled demon, which tired to get him to release the seal so it can wipe out Konoha. After butting heads with Kayubi, reminding the fox that the Uzumaki never used him as a weapon like the other tailed beasts Kayubi learned to help him, Shockley Kayubi was female instead of unsexed mass of chakra or male because of Kayubi's voice in her fox form. Kayubi did start it out a sexless mass of chakra but her last two hosts were female and their chakra happened to intermix with the fox's own when Kayubi was held inside both. She became the first of many allies, Kayubi acted like an older sister to him after being freed she vowed to be at his side instead of going after the mask man who was id as Uchiha Madara. Teaching him many useful things not just in the ways of ninja she learned when sealed inside the senin of six paths and she still can't do half the stuff the god of modern ninja did before he became the host for the nine-tailed beasts, but in the three lifetimes she had been sealed also learned many other aspects of life which she imparted to him along with Erla Raven and Mera so this came useful when he gained an ambition, an ambition which would make him the most powerful ruler in the land. To the west of the known elemental countries, things were done much different in many aspects. Firstly, since the hidden wars hadn't gotten near these lands, the population was higher because there were no great wars to diminish human life in fact there were several near humans population had moved to the west to get away from the wars or been driven from the homes and hated for being different the most numbest group were the yoki humans with certain anatomical attributes that are considered normal, such as animal ears and tails, even wings that allowed some to fly in the air. The West's outlooks on demons was very open compared to the East's Kayubi was somewhat ashamed to admit it that she wasn't the most powerful beast or demon that walked the lands. There were demons that lived here in the West would make even Kayubi think twice in picking a fight with thankfully most of them were passive and didn't attack without a good reason to still Kayubi was feared and respected by the demons in the West. Also, the first hidden war saw the end of the samurai era, but only in the East. To the West, both ninja and samurai worked together to create a strong, military force for which all the western countries used. Thought there were people who easily turned the tide of battle alone, much like his father had done in the third hidden war. But lastly the biggest difference was in fact a flaw of the western part of the continent unlike the east, after the last three hidden wars there was strong central governments that held power, such as the daimyos, the west was nearly a lawless and chaotic place. Local warlords and bandit kings rose up and took power away from the daimyos, leaving them powerless, and used their newfound power to terrorize and control the countries. Some warlords even sought to expand their power and declared war on other warlords, fighting over land and resources while the wars were less frequent, it didn't mean they were less fierce. Many battles resulted in both sides losing many soldiers, samurai, and ninja that resulted in the death of one or both warlords participating in the fight. However, a sad fact there would always be another warlord who would rise up and take the place of his predecessor and start it all over Ajin. When he arrived in the west, he ran afoul with the local bandits, getting an arrow though the chest would take time to heal thought he would be dead before Kayubi could mend his wound but a group of patrolling Roth clan ninjas saved his life, and when they were healing him they saw spiral seal on him stomach and knew what he was. The Roth leaders studied his seal and asked what was his clan name came as a shock it was Uzumaki in the past both clans had came across each other in the past and then asked what was host to he got ready to fight his out Kayubi was getting ready to aid her host but was dumbfounded when Roth didn't bat eyelash at that. They were accepting in the fact of him being Jinchiriki to Kayubi and did not fear him because of it but the children the younger ones wanted become Jinchiriki to get those kitty whiskers. Naruto face faulted at hearing that and shot that idea down saying he was born with them this made many children pout. After retelling his story the clan leader welcomed him as a part of their of the clan not for power he held but to show what felt it like to have a family, while surprising to many of the Roth clan and the joy to pair twins Naruto had befriended when he was healing. He was brought up to speed on what's going on in the west, and he didn't like what he heard. There were a few ninja and samurai clans who were neutral and powerful enough to warn away the more powerful warlords away from their lands, being to much trouble for little gain but were too small to challenge the warlords' armies, 
the Hojo clan attempted to fight the warlords in open battle but were wiped out. The Roth clan fell into this grouping and were the largest clan in the local area, and protected the villages in return for supplies in the past they were trying to form a hidden village like in the east see how peaceful the east was at times with other ninja clans even few samurai clans were interested. But after the Hojo's fall made many other neutral clans became hesitant in joining forces or shared their fate. The Roth clan and many others now were being harassed by minor warlords day and night to become their allies or attack by damned bandits who tried to enslave to outright massacring the whole clan and take all the loot and women from the village they protected, more than once the Roth clan leader Erla who easily ranked Senen herself had to rescue one of her clan from bandits who were having their way with the usably a female Roth clan ninja, and was nicknamed Bandit Slayer. When he arrived it was getting worse there had been talks of a all-out war between the major warlords that would make last three hidden wars in the east look like three-year-old schoolyard fight Naruto was at a loss he wanted to help. Kayubi remarked that she would be a lot more useful other than a power source, but without a host she would lose herself to her rage Naruto gave that a thought and bounced the idea to Erla she did know a way using a blood clone and soul transferred but she wasn't sure that it would work she only studied those jutsus so that idea was shelved besides Naruto would died if Kayubi was removed. Oddly both clans seemed to have one half of Senen of Six Paths Fuenjutsu and both Fuenjutsu styles were based of their part of Senen of Six Paths Fuenjutsu. Uzumaki used the swirl as the primary for their seals. Roth used characters as their primary for their seals. Both used the wed like array Senen of Six Paths made. Uzumaki arrays had raw power and need a large area to be placed Roth arrays lacked power but had control and needed less space, when he and Roth leader tested both east and west types of exploding notes while mocking each other on who had the better exploding notes east or west what happened both tags arrays seemly combined before exploding with the force of 100 tags, they both nearly gotten killed from the shockwave and bit burnt, but were in awe at combined power. After going though every scroll on Fuenjutsu find out how the impossible became possible and found the very jutsu to free the fox, it seemed the great senen of six paths was working on a way to bind the nine chakra beasts into living shells for them to live out their lifespan as living beings of flesh and blood but the great sage was nearing the end of his life before he can use it. Naruto still doesn't think fate rules over life he had a feeling that old target eyes had planned this from beyond the grave to make this happen. A lot of work went into the releasing of Kyubi from the seal with all of Cutie's power intact and keeping himself alive thanks to his mother's blood in his veins. His Uzumaki blood and blood of a foxyoki was used to birth a shell to house Cutie Chakra. After being freed Kyubi was no longer the semi-mindless beast and felt saddened for her hand in his parents' death and apologies to him. She became the first of many allies. Kayubi acted like an older sister to him after being freed she vowed to be at his side instead of going after the mask man who was id as Uchiha Madara. Teaching him many useful things not just in the ways of ninja she learned when sealed inside the senen of six paths and she still can't do half the stuff the god of modern ninja did before he became the host for the nine-tailed beasts, but in the three lifetime she had been sealed also learned many other aspects of life which she imparted to him along with Erla Raven and Mera so this came useful when he gained an ambition an ambition which would make him the most powerful ruler in the land. After learning about the West's problems Naruto saw the lawlessness of the land, and together with Kayubi, Uzumaki Naruto vowed to unite the land, to bring peace to the Roth clan and the war-torn land in the West. He became first no throughout the land when he took on and killed one of the most dangerous warlords, the proclaimed and much feared, Demon King, Oda Nobunaga. Nobunaga had been for pushing the Roth clan to allied with him for years after he became a major power in the region, only reason he hadn't overran their territory yet, seeing as he respected Erla and clan's skills he hadn't forced this in the past knowing he would lose a lot troops in wearing her and Roth clan down. But with talk of all out war between the major warlords in was only a matter of time before Nobunaga would take care of any problems at his rear before going after the major warlords. Naruto had the battle scars to prove that Nobunaga rightfully eared the title of Demon King. Nobunage fought like a demon he even welded the fable sword the blade of the Demon King and wasn't even being controlled by the blade's aura like many others that held it, Kayubi even remarked that Nobunaga's chakra was as dark and evil as Uchiha Madara's. But thankfully Naruto had trained hard for this and managed to gain a weapon that can match the blade of the Demon King, the legendary dragon sword but it was still close. 
Naruto chuckled Nobunaga's chakra was dark and evil but he knew this land needed to be united under one leader. In his last breath Nobunaga with a smile on his face proclaimed Naruto as the one to succeed and surpass him in his ambition unite the land as shogun of the west. Well Nobunaga you were right about me hope you're having a good time with Zabuza in hell. Muttered Naruto knowing those two he'll bet that they're running place if the demons in hell didn't match up with their standards on what demons should be. Kit the Demios have arrived and are waiting for your arrival, spoke a red hair woman. Thanks Kayubi let's not keep them waiting, Naruto said and walked with Kayubi to the meeting room. Konoha Hokage Tower Tsunade sighed the Kamis must have cursed Konoha after Naruto's banishment. Sasuke escaped to Otto every country where Naruto had missions broke off all trade and treaties they made with Konoha, and any ninjas from Konoha were treated as hostile invades. And because of the stupidly of the elders Konoha instead of fighting just Otto now Iwa and Kumo sided with Otto and their allies Kurataki and Suna were only allies in name and have abandoned Konoha in their time of need. Tsunade sat in her behind her desk with her fingers interlocked in front of her face, with Shizune beside her. Standing in front of her was the assembled team in which they would prove to be the salvation of Konoha. Kakashi Hitaki, Kuranai Yuhi, Kiba Inazuka, Shino Aburame, Sakura Haruno, and Hanada Hayuga. Many of the selected group was of the former Rookie Nine, and she picked each one for a different reason. Kakashi Hitaki was a skilled Jonin, with over a thousand jutsu and the legendary Sharingan, he would be a formidable opponent to anyone they met. He was also sensei of the now deceased Team 7, and knew the boy, Naruto Uzumaki, quite well. She secretly hoped that if they did encounter Naruto along the way, even though it was a slim chance, he would be able to convince him to return. Kuranai Yuhi, the Genjustu mistress, would prove a valuable support by confusing the enemy with her illusions. She was also a last column of support for Hinata, so she was also valued for that reason. Kiba Inazuka and his partner Akamaru were a deadly double team, and being the rank of Jonin also showed his skills. When she told everyone of Naruto's darkest secret, he was one of the first to turn against the blonde. Now she wished she hadn't had done it, as if they even got Naruto back, he would receive a less than warm welcome. Shino Aburame was also a very skilled Jonin, having being good a reconnaissance made him needed should they run into trouble seeing the others hated Naruto Shino followed the group. Sakura Haruno the best medic nin ever to be produced, even in Tsunade's prime she couldn't achieve what her apprentice had done, so it was only natural that she takes this mission. Like Kiba, she despised Naruto, not for being a demon, but as danger that needed to be eliminated. Again Tsunade wondered if it was a good idea to tell them about Naruto's dark secret. Finally, Hanada Hayuga was put on the team for a very special reason, while she was only a chunin, her diplomatic skills were second to none. So if the shogun was to decide not to aid the village, then Hinata would do her very best to persuade him to reconsider. She was the only one out of the rookie nine to miss Naruto, and finding out his secret only strengthened her love for the blonde. Love really is a special thing. The reason you are all here is because you all will be going to the western empire and try and persuade the shogun of the west to aid us in this war. The assembled nin were surprised, they were going west. None of them had any knowledge of the lands so this was a complete new adventure for them. Is the upcoming war with Otto Iwa and Kumo that bad? asked Hinata. It is, we will lose this war, that is why you all have been entrusted with this mission because of your skills. You must do everything you can to make him join the war as our ally, or we will lose this war. The future of Konoha hangs in the balance, so you must not fail. Tsunade spoke with a very rare seriousness, which made all present understand the situation better. They were to try and get the empire into the war, or Konoha would surely fall. The imperial city the meeting was to deal with several financial problems in the southern area of the empire, which was considered to be the poorest of areas. Naruto had tried his hardest to bring money to those areas, and it was only now beginning to work, if only a slight difference. Naruto signed. Sometimes it was hard being the shogun. Making important decisions which would affect the lives of millions in the empire. But he knew it was all worth it for if he didn't unite the country, then it still would be divided and war-torn. Ah what a long day, groaned Naruto dropping his whole body onto a couch. Running an empire wasn't going to be easy even after six years at least you don't have to mountains of paperwork to do. Remarked Kayubi, getting a laugh from Naruto. Good thing or I'll be grey and old by the time I finish one of old man Hokage daily workloads, 
said Naruto, as a maid placed some tea down for Kayubi and himself. About Konoha, Kayubi said it was a touchy subject for both if she hated Konoha she despised Orochimaru a lot more. I don't know if the old man was still alive I would have but he isn't. I despised Orochimaru a lot but revenge being the only reason for going to war is not good enough, sighed Naruto. A wise leader must put the people welfare before his own desires, said Kayubi. I know I know, muttered Naruto, what about Hanada it wouldn't be too hard for your elite ninja to kidnap her, Kayubi thought out loud. No I will not force her away from her home and life besides she must hate me the demon brat. Besides you're the one who shouldn't give tips on love seeing your own fan club like that imp and his group singing imps that kept half the city awake as they sing his love for you off key I might add. Kayubi face turned as red as her hair when he reminded her of that. But if she still loves you, asked Kayubi she was classed as a fox yoki by the ever moody and dull toned dragon warlord and more than one human yoki oni or just plain demon kind tried to woo her even forced her to be their mate. The wooing attempts like that orge who laid a dead cow at her feet showing her he can provide for her, the singing imps was still the talk of the city. Those who tried to make her their mate found out that why she was the fear Kayubi who level mountains with a swish of her nine tail before Naruto got his hands on them being a overprotected little brother. He sighed, still, in some ways Konoha was his old home, even though it really didn't act like one. And there was Hanada, she would surely die if Konoha fell. He admitted that he still held feeling for her, but how did she feel about him? Suddenly he remembered the late Serutobi's speech about the will of fire and in many ways he had to thank the old man for being the family he never had. In fact if he were still alive he would have gone and supported Konoha, because he was one of the few who treated him like a human, like Hanada. He was brought out of his thoughts when he felt a presence near him. Turning, he could see one of his servants waiting at the door. Pardon me your majesty, but there is a lady waiting to see you in the guest lounge, he spoke. Naruto raised an eyebrow, who could it be? Did she say who her name was? The servant looked deep in thought as he tried to remember her name, upon seeing so many guests all the time it was hard to remember all their names. Then it suddenly came to him. Ah yes now I remember, she said her name was Yukie Fujikazi. Well then I shall not keep her ladyship waiting, said Naruto feeling this week was going to be good. A week pasted the size of the wall dwarfed Konoha own walls and have ten times the number of Poplizali as the team from Konoha stood in awe as they appeared in front of the gates to the capital city of the Western Empire in a week after they crossed the border to the west. Kakashi turned to the others. Okay. Take off your headbands and take out your false identity cards and papers, we must not tell them we are from Konoha, or they could get the wrong idea. The other nodded, understanding the situation, and did as they were told. Kakashi even took of his face mask, which came to a shock at the others. Finally they would see his face, he turned to them. What? He asked wearing large fake bread that still hid his face. The others just shook it off, while put a simple headband on to cover his Sharingan eye. After getting ready, they started to walk down to the main gate but saw a lot of military units using the main gate. The civilian travelers were using smaller more defensible subgates that can be quickly closed or blocked off in case of siege. Upon arriving they were stopped by two guards on duty. The team's surprise, they were samurai, only the land of iron still used samurai as their main military force in the east and well trained at the stances they took. This easily showed them that in this part of the continent, being a samurai wasn't out of fashion, unlike the east. Halt! Please state your business here. The guard who spoke was easily seen as a veteran due to his age. The other looked only to be in his late twenties. Kakashi took the lead. Hello, we are a group of tourists from the east, the Jonin replied, we came to see the empire sites, as they were told to be quite exquisite, at this both samurai laughed. Will I have to say we get a lot of tourists in the empire, he explained, if I had to recommend a site it would be Ryu Temple a few miles from the imperial city. If you're lucky. You may get to see a real, live dragon, said the younger samurai. At this the Konoha nin looked shocked. A real dragon? The guards laughed again as they saw the looks on their faces. Yes, real dragons most of them live in the mountains but a few do live near the temple because of the natural hot springs. They're harmless if you don't bother them but it's a good thing you tourists came here when you did you get to see the shogun summon the five elemental dragons for the empire's founding day celebrations. Shogun has some mighty allies under his command, younger samurai, remarked. 
Sakura saw the perfect chance to ask some questions about the Shogun. Speaking of the Shogun, what is he like? She asked, making herself sound like as excited as possible. I have to say he is by far the best ruler ever to come across the western continent, we are truly blessed by Kami. The guard started. He loves his people dearly, and tries not to retort to force, only seeing it as a last resort. And he's a truly a charismatic individual. In fact, many of the wars he fought was with words, and not swords. When he did fight he was a force of nature he became no after he fought and killed one of the most powerful warlords in the west the demon king, Oda Nobunaga, if he didn't Nobunaga would have been ruling the empire, the samurai said. I heard of Nobunaga he was merciless as he was powerful, spoke Shino, I'm guessing the shogun was more powerful. Either way, he won them all I used to follow the banner of Takeda Shingen he is one of the more honorable warlords everyone though there was going to be a battle but the shogun came under a white flag and talked with him and lord Shingen swore his loyalty to the young man. But he is not the type of person you want to cross if you anger him, many less than honorable warlords found out, which would be a feat all on its own, because if you do then his vengeance is swift. Luckily that rarely happens. Also, he is only 19 years old and he manages to rule the empire with great wisdom. Mind you, I think his companion has something to do with that. Kiba raised a brow. Companion? asked Kiba. Hanada was hoping the companion had blonde hair blues eyes and whisker mark on his cheeks. A red-haired beauty she was always at his side be it in battle or not and I know for a fact isn't human but a demon I saw her transform from a beast to human at will. Said younger samurai, Hanada's hope fell. Hearing this Konoha Nin stiffen up. Did the Shogun command demons or as the Shogun was a puppet of a demon? The older samurai saw the tourists' uneasiness the West had a lot contact with demons and other kinds of spirits not all of them were evil and having a lot of priests and priestess to purify the ones that did even the warlord didn't bother demons along with the well no ones but those that did met their end from a curse or clause of one it's better to have a powerful demon neutral to you than having one as an enemy. No one knows if she be a demon or oni but the look in her eye tell anyone that she has been around for a long time, the shogun seems to trust her a lot, being one of his personal advisors, and help the shogun with problems, so far she hasn't steed him wrong yet. Will we be able to see him? Hinata spoke, trying not to stutter. Well he does hold public speeches once a month, talking about the current events that are usually important. In fact the speech that was on some days ago was the speech of the anniversary of the empire's unification. I have to stress he is a very good public speaker, able to capture the crowd's attention with just his words. But if want to try and see him on a one-to-one, -one, I think that won't happen. Kakashi frowned slightly, it would be difficult to get an audience with the shogun. Do you know where we can get a map of the city, so we know where we are going? At this the younger guard reached into his pocket, and pulled out a folded map, which he gave to Kakashi. He thanked him for the item. You need it the city is a maze after being lay siege and rebuilt after many year by one invading warlord after another the shogun's first acts was to rebuild city bottom up tearing down the older buildings and restoring the city's landmarks making it safer. The people welfare came first before the palace was built for a good two years shogun lived inside a massive tent in the middle of where the foundation for the palace would be laid he won the people over by making sure every family got a roof over their heads in gratitude the people began working on the palace making it bigger than it was supposed be. But there's still a lot of the city still has closed off sections where rebuilding hasn't been started yet so many criminals hide out in the ruins so if you see warning signs turn the other way fast if you value your life. This made some of the group nervous. Now before I can let you in, can we see some ID? Asked the elder samurai the team pulled out their fake ID cards and showed them to the guards. A column of troops marched out from the main gate alongside their gate. Security's tight going to have a war or something, Kiba commented, before being silenced by a glare from Kurinai. The old man sighed, yes it has to be, he said, gathering their attention, with that war that's going on in the east that it could spill into the west the fear of that happening shogun recalled the four warlords from their home provinces in case it does and placing all combat ready clans and troops in the eastern region high alert. The shogun really doesn't want to get involved in this war for some reason. Maybe it's because he wants to protect his people from a war that is not ours to fight. Suddenly for the team, it felt that getting the shogun to join forces with Konoha had just gotten harder. My brother got ship out last week to the forts because of this, said the younger Samuari, 
Easterns now start a war after we just finished all because some ninja village cast out one of their own who netted them so many treaties. Everyone besides Hanada flinched at hearing that. A really bad move if you ask me I heard all those treaties were torn up after hearing what happened and that village is going to get overrun easily after casting out that one ninja, they need someone like the shogun to pull them out of the fire. Remarked the older Samuari. Yes very foolish said Hanada as the others became worried on the whole outcome of this mission. A shadow moved with a life of its own away from the group it had followed them for over a week having after passing the broader. Finally, the gates opened, and they were led into the city, but with all this happening, not one of them noticed that not far from their current position from the shadow emerged a robbed, hooded figure. The shogun must be informed about this, thought the figure and submerged back into the shadows. Naruto smiled at Yukie as he poured her another drink of red wine. After the mission to Spring Country, the two had remained good friends. Yukie went as far as to cut all ties with Konoha when Naruto got banished, causing a huge blow for the village. When Naruto became shogun, Yukie was the first to find out his identity, and visited him regularly when she had some free time of being the daimyo. She was one of the few people outside the empire he could fully trust with his feelings, and had his complete trust. You know I still cannot believe you want to star in Jairia's Icha Icha movie, at this Yukie laughed. Well I thought it would be an interesting experience, Naruto smiled as he took a sip of his wine Icha Icha was very popular in the west as it been in the east. You don't know how much of an experience you were going to get Yukie chan she blushed at the comment made by the blonde. Naruto's smile only got bigger as he saw the look on her face. A knock on the door unexpectedly interrupted the two. Naruto turned his head to the door. Enter, he shouted, and with silent creak the door opened, revealing a dark robed figure with a hood. Naruto smiled but noted figure wasn't here to see him and say hi but to report as a ninja of the empire his face suddenly turned serious. Naruto there a problem, spoke a ninja, what is it? asked Naruto. A group of ninja have entered the city in secret they appeared to be from Konoha I trailed them from border to this very city spoke the robe person now identified as a woman. They removed their headbands and used forged documents and ids to enter, from what I overheard they wanted to seek the shogun help for their war. Naruto's eyes widened then narrowed, bring them here, I want to ask them personally what the hell they are doing here in my lands. And have Kayubi greet them in her fox form I believed she is in her office. I'll get her, spoke the robed female as she left. Yukie looked worried, it looks like I will be facing my past, said Naruto as he puts on his coat. The team from Konoha tried very hard to navigate through the busy streets. Thanks to the map the guard gave them, they would be able to find a hotel in which they could stay for the night, as try to seek an audience with the emperor. As they walked past, they saw that much of this place wasn't much different from Konoha, as they saw similar shops and people wearing similar clothing. What they did find different though was from time to time, they would pass a two squad patrol that consisted of armored samurai and ninjas. The East's version of Anbu by his guests noting their outfits and masks as he watched them hopping from the rooftops or perch on a pole Kakashi had to admit, the only reason why the samurai had died in the East was because of a quick change, and that change can easily have an opposite if another shinobi war took place. Sakura noted there was a few people that made her do a double take like they had tails or animal ears a few people that they passed Sakura swore they were wings on their back but thought it as western tastes in style. Akamaru, didn't like the crowded streets, which could be easily told by his whining. Must because of the small room available and by the stairs because of his size. Kiba did his best to comfort his canine companion. So Kakashi do you know where we are going? Kurenai asked. Kakashi turned his head to face her. Yes, all we need to do is to turn right at the next corner, then we will be at our destination. The Jonin replied. Kurenai suddenly felt fast movement, and quickly sup around. Kakashi stopped gathering the other members' attention. Kurenai saw samurai making their way though the crowds looking for someone. A samurai locked eyes with hers before waving the other samurai over. What's wrong senpei? Sakura asked. She got her answer when she saw a group of samurai run towards them as the rooftops became crowed by ninjas cutting off escape routes. Stop right there, one of them yelled. The Konoha team got into a defensive stance. All around them the civilians tried to get away from the scene, making a large circle around them. The samurai encircled the group, katanas drawn. 
Kiba growled, and was about to charge, but a hand from Sakura stopped him. No, if you attack, it could make matters worse, she pleaded. Kiba understood, and decided not to attack. They were here for an alliance, not to make war. A roar deafens everyone as something caused people up ahead to move out of the way making a wide path. Clear the way clear the way shouted a man as a large paw followed by another moved past him the Konoha group blood froze as they saw a large red furred fox prowl between the building's mind full of the humans underfoot when the fox stopped waiting for a mother pulled her child out of the way then move along. The terror of Konoha neared the Konoha nins and stopped before them after the samurai surround them. The fox's nine tails waved back and four as the fox's eyes glared at the ninjas making them sweat a little in turn made the fox to grin with its fangs a hooded person most likely a trained ninja from the way the person leaps down from Kayubi's head with ease. Kayubi? Sakura muttered. How is this possible? The fox burst into flames, and as quickly as it appeared, it died down, revealing a tall beautiful red-haired woman wearing a blood-red battle dress that hugged her every curved her legs were clad in long black leg stockings with the heels and toes bared as the woman had sharp claws on her toes and fingers. Her cheeks had six whisker marks like Naruto's but longer and darker. What ready made her stand out, besides being a giant fox, was her blood-red silted eyes. Kayubi rolled her shoulders feeling a bit stiff having used her tailed beast form after having not used in a while. Why is Kayubi Sama here? whispered someone from the crowd. It seemed Kayubi was a very important person in the West. They must be dangerous for the shogun to send her to face them. Some of the people with children decided to leave to spare their kids from seeing a lot of blood being spilt. Kayubi smirked in her mind, having made a reputation in the West other than being the feared nine tailed demon fox like in the East, as the same robed ninja walked behind her. Is them? spoke the robed ninja. So, how should this be handled? I'll take care of them we have history after all, spoke Kayubi. It seems I am cursed to be forever running into Konoha Ninja, muttered Kayubi rolling her left shoulder to get a kink out as she advanced them like they were prey. Walking up to them her red silted eye looked at each of them but blinked at Hinata before going back to the rest she sneered. Just like Konoha to just walk into places uninvited, as if they owned the place. Though her voice was soft, the tone was harsh. Kiba was the first to recover, and retorted. Drop the henge no jutsu Kayubi or should I say Naruto you're not fooling us. The crowd started to murmur, what is he talking about making Kayubi growled in annoyance. This boy was a fool. How dare you speak to Lady Kayubi in such a matter, shouted the now female robe ninja. Why the hell are you defending that monster? Shouted Kiba's causing the samurai to get annoyed, watch what you say boy, stated the lead samurai. The robe ninja would have stabbed a kanai into Kiba's forehead for his disrespect but Kayubi raised her hand. I'll deal with this I'm more than willing to correct him on his mistake. The robe ninja nodded and backs down as do the samurai. I'm so going to enjoy this, said Kayubi moving towards the Konoha team Kiba gulped as, Naruto, started to crack his knuckles with an evil grin the demon fox had been well known to have before dealing out painful and bloody death. Kayubi grabbed the front of Kiba's coat and lifted the young man easy and reared back her right arm and punched him hard in the face. Did that feel like henge to you mutt your dog seems to know better? Akamaru whimpered and backed away. I am Kayubi. She growled as she throws Kiba down to the ground. Kiba tried to get back up but Kayubi put her stocking covered foot on his chest keeping him pined to ground with little effort on Kiba part felt like his chest was nearly being crushed. Locking her eyes to his as she looked down a bit with both hands on her hip. Let me tell you this once, inbred fool. Naruto and I are completely separate entities. Don't get the jailer mixed up with the prisoner. She said looking at Kiba like he was a bug to be crushed under her foot on her part he was a bug, on Kiba's part he was in shock it wasn't a henge, wasn't Naruto the Kayubi. The demon signed in what seemed to be boredom. I'm taking you all to see the shogun and he is not pleased said Kayubi causing everyone to have a bad feeling in their guts. Turning to the robed ninja at her side, could you open us a portal to the palace? she asked. The ninja complied by going though eight hand seals and using two fingers slashed at the air summoning a large shadow rift for them to travel through. Now would you like to move under your own power or shall we? Well I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Kakashi nodded to his team, they would go quietly, they were after all uninvited guests in another land, and she was Kayubi. Without any force they walked through the portal, the Kayubi with ninja and samurai in tow. 
They could only stare in awe at the site they gazed upon after exiting the rift. The architecture of the palace was nothing they ever saw before. It truly was fit for the shogun the building easily overshadowed nearly ever other in the whole city it was that large. Take a long break you eared it, said Kayubi as she turned, and a bath you smell a bit ripe. Kayubi said as she rubbed her nose, your normal room is ready. The robed ninja removed her hood to show a very beautiful young woman with short purple hair and light ash color skin with deep purple eyes and a black and red tattoo on her forehead, scowls at the fox woman. You would after trailing that lot for over a week and tell the shogun my mother and sister will arrive within the week and the Roth clan misses both you and your former host, spoke the woman before she shunshin no jutsu using shadows that coil around her before sinking to nothingness the Konoha team was a bit shocked that they were followed and unable to detect her or the young woman was seemly friends with Kayubi. Let get going I would hate to anger the shogun any more than he is now, said Kayubi before moving the group along. Everyone noted that there are a lot of branders all of them one of five types. One is dark red with a styled fox spiral in black. Two is brighter shape of red with hanabishi, three vertical flowers. Characters for tiger and farinkazan in gold. Three is white with two flying swallows in bamboo with the characters of bishamontan and dragon all black. Four is blue with a circle around three hollyhock leaves in white and the character for turtle. Five white two cranes bowing their heads together over a centipede and the characters for rebirth and fire all printed in red. Must be shoguns and the four warlords banners, Sakura thought out loud. Kayubi turned to the ninjas, I don't know what your purpose is for coming here, but I can take a wild guess and say you're trying to kill the shogun based on your less than open entry into this city but I highly doubted it just by judging your team, she said it like it was a threat and an insult. But I should warn you know that his majesty is not happy with your little infiltration of his lands, she spoke with a serious tone. The large gates in front of them opened, allowing them entry into the palace. Um, Kayubi? The demon turned his head to see the Hayuga. MMH, to Kayubi was plenty surprised that Hanada's eyes held little fear, and could only chuckle in response. Could I ask why someone such as yourself would serve the shogun? And is his Naruto with him? I have my reasons dear Hinata, as for Naruto he is alive but to where he is right now which you will see soon enough. The ninja made their own conclusion, whoever was the shogun was powerful enough to gain a demon like Kayubi as his ally, and most likely Naruto was really close to the shogun. They also knew that if they ever did go to war with the empire, to captured Kayubi they would easily lose. The interior had a mix of old and new but wasn't overly decorated but simple no doubt years of war made practicality the rule of the wise something many hidden villages have forgotten. Finally they came to a pair of decorated doors, a guard on each side. Kayubi nodded to the guards, who saluted in response. His majesty is waiting inside Kayubi-sama. Kayubi nodded, and turned to the Konoha team both hands behind her back. I would advise you to watch your mouths and any attack will be dealt with. She raised her right hand showing her partly curled fingers top with deadly looking claws, deadly force. The threat was more directed at Kiba and Sakura more than anyone else, much to their confusion. The doors were opened, and they slowly walked through. What they laid eyes upon was a grand hall, at the very end of the hall stands the ruler of an empire. A man with his back turned to them everyone noted the long mane of spiky blonde hair, dressed much like samurai and the symbol on his coat matched the fox banner. He both hands clasped together as he looked at the city though the large window that dominated the end of the grand hall. Even now Konoha seems to scorn my existence. The figure spoke, his voice filled with venom as the man turned to face them. Hanada's eyes lit up like the sun maybe her prayers would come true and he would save her from her fate. It can't be, Sakura muttered to herself, deep in distress on who the shogun was. Kakashi finally managed to regain his voice, but still only able to say a single word. Naruto. Surprise Kakashi I'm been no to make the impossible possible, said Naruto with a grin before releasing demoic level of ki. Now why the hell you trash doing in my empire? Kayubi showed him how to produce that kind of ki. Gulping Kakashi stepped forward, we have come on the behalf of Konoha for the empire's aid in a war. I'm well aware of Konoha plight but why should I even care? stated Naruto the entire group was stopped. But Konoha was you, started Sakura but Naruto's cold gaze locked on to her making a cold shiver run down her spine. 
Konoha is not my home I was never welcomed there after both of my parents gave up their lives to seal Kayubi inside me. I sacrifice and bleed for ungrateful village I nearly died three time in doing my duty but did I even got a thank you no I was still shunned only handful people were there for me but even they had turned their backs to me save one person stand by me. You know I can and willingly invade Konoha and it level to dust just for revenge, said Naruto. But I'm not going to be like Orochimaru, thought I have many good reasons I'm a better human being than him. The an entire group felt a cold pit of fear in their stomach this was not the same Naruto from six years ago. The guards and even Kayubi winced at the tone Naruto had a lifetime of pent-up anger, and she was the embodiment of rage was saying something about how angry Naruto was, she sighed seeing the Hayuga girl in tears. Kayubi knew he had to be hard as Shogun and giving him a Naruto tone it down look. Naruto sighs at this thinking on how to handle this. Kuranai stepped up seeing Kakashi had giving up everything Naruto had said was truth Kuranai saw Hinata was too broken to be of help she had to salvage the mission for the village's sake. I'm sure Konoha has something to offer that might interest your empire, spoke Kuranai, sweating a little as the former village pariah now turned powerful ruler of empire, in under six years and locked those cold eye those on to her think about what her father wanted her to become a woman and a mother she hadn't become a mother yet if the shogun had her killed before that happens. I highly doubted that Yuhi, Naruto tone made Kuranai flinched, western ninja are battle hardened after years of war and develop jutsus and bloodlines that surpass anything from Konoha, and I trust a D rank jutsu from them to a S rank jutsu from Konoha. Naruto turned his back to them, here's what I think, he thought out loud before he looks at them. I see a village full of trash whose blind arrogant has now dug its own grave begging for someone to save it said naruto his eyes soften when he looked into her eyes but as shogun he wasn't able to be soft right now i'm sorry hinata but i'll make it up to you later naruto thought naruto turned his back to them again the empire of the west will not aid konoha i will not waste valuable resources and manpower in a war that doesn't involve my empire so tell that dunk old bitch that the empire's answer to konoha's begging is no the konoha team were stunned Hanada was in tears thinking that Naruto hate her too soccer attired to speak but nothing came out. I will have you killed if you try entering my land like spies again for your trespassing you spend the night in the dungeons and escorted the day after out of my land's guards take them away, ordered Naruto. As the guards drag his former friends and possible lover to the nice dark and damp dungeons no saw the tears in Naruto eyes. Having retired to his study Naruto Sai he really hated being a hard ass teme it came with the job of shogun and hated himself more for doing that to Hinata. Turning to the door knowing only the servants knocked he wasn't to surprises when the door opened without a knock. Naruto. Spoke the young woman dressed in a dark blue robe with a white wrap around her waist behind her was Kayubi. Oh hi raven you look great how sis and mom been doing? said Naruto when he had been healing got to know centric members the Roth clan like the clan leader Roth Erla and her twin daughters Raven and Maria. They didn't care if he was a host for a feared tailed beast and sort of treated him like a part of their family. The Roth clan wanted peace and started to form a hidden village like the ones in the east to be a counter to the warlords and keep them in check but after the Hojo's fall at the hands of the Demon King. The clans that were willing to join forces pulled out not wanting to incur his or the other warlord's wrath down on their heads. When Naruto began his campaign to bring about end to the Warring States era the Roth clan were the first to follow Naruto at the beginning. Erla had the feeling Naruto would not only change the west but the world, she was proven right when he fought Nobunaga who had the same drive to unite the land under one rule but his heavy handed tactics like killing soldiers who surrender without mercy he would have prolonged the bloodshed and Roth would have to fight him and would have lost. Naruto was shaken out of his thoughts as he noted the look on the woman's face and only one thought ran in his head, oh snap she not happy, as Raven was about to unleash her most deadliness's weapon her razor sharp sarcasm. Instead of bowing thought he knew she knows protocol and when not to use it that meant Raven was going to be very frank with Naruto and let it be known. Pacing back and forth looking at before she glared at him, so let me get this straight you sent your possible one true love to the dungeons, tick. You really know how to treat a girl. Raven stated she was top form today sarcasm was as sharp as a Kanata sword. I know, bemoaned Naruto and hung his head. I will make it up to her, Naruto declared. Like make up or like make out, remarked Kayubi. Shut up Kayubi, yelled Naruto it was his turn to blush. 
Kayubi laughter was heard though out the room. Good she hasn't had it easy after your banishment and her life has taken a turn for the worst, spoke Raven while trailing the Konoha team she overheard Hinata talk to that red-eyed woman about being branded in an arranged marriage to the Sun One that has a lot of power and wished Naruto would return. What, she's not sick is she, Naruto said then smack himself in the face always thinking that she was sick. Kayubi dragged her hand down her face and groaned he may be older wiser and smarter but Naruto's was still thick head at times. Raven felt for the girl after hearing her problem and her ever lovable shogun needed a kick in the pants, she in good heath from what I overheard when she was talking to that woman with red eyes it seems she has a few major problems. What kind of problems, asked Naruto but Raven shakes her head Kayubi knew the Hyuga clan hated her and Naruto, added Hinata dislike of outdated traditions and her feelings for Naruto wouldn't go too well with the rest but like Raven wouldn't speak of it. It's not my place to tell her story she has to do it, said Raven not wanting to overly upset Naruto soon after his outburst early today. It may be nothing but I felt you should know shall I retrieve Lady Hinata, asked Raven. Please and escort her to my room, asked Naruto grateful that his sister gave him a good kick in the right direction. I want to talk to her, we have a lot of time to make up. Most likely making out and doing it, remarked Kayubi with a fox-like grin, as Naruto glared at the fox woman. Raven wisely got out of the room to spare her ears from the loud noise that was coming. Shut up Kayubi, boomed though out the palace. It had been only several hours since they were thrown into the dark prisons under the palace. But to the team from Konoha, it seemed like an eternity. A few cells from there's a poker game had been going on with with the guards and their only prisoner a theft who seemingly was trying to seal something to prove he was greatest theft that ever lived and it seemed he was more of an annoying visitor than a master theft who cowers in fear at some dancer he knows muttering about her red umbrella and hitting him to hard. Not a single word was spoken as none could get over the fact that Naruto had not only rejected their plea for help, but also threatened them with death. Sakura was hugging her knees, muttering unheard apologies to her former teammate, the teammate she betrayed. Kiba just sat quietly, looking lifeless as he stared at the wall his partner was muzzled and had been chained to the wall at his neck by the guards not wanting to take risks with such a large nin dog. Kakashi had tears down his face, finally realizing how stupid he had been to abandon Naruto on so many occasions. Shino, like Kiba, just sat quietly on the ground, keeping to himself with an odd Fuin note on his chest placed by the guards knowing about his colony held the queen in a forced sleep genjutsu leavening the colony paralyzed. Kuranai was trying desperately to comfort Hinata, who at this moment in time believed Naruto hated her after the way she was treated she was going to marry that man her very own clan had chosen, she was going to be shipped out on her return Konoha with several other women men and the elders to preserve the Hyuga clan in case Konoha is destroyed. It didn't comfort her that a few of the elders were looking at her with lust and wouldn't put it past them to sample her. You know we are the reason why Naruto has turned out like this, Kuranai spoke, finally breaking the silence. Kakashi turned to her. But he is after all, Konoha's most unpredictable ninja. Kakashi did a haunting laugh at the comment. He isn't Konoha's ninja anymore Kuranai, he replied, and it's all Konoha's fault on the whole, we left him. We abandoned him. The Genjutsu mistress signed in displeasure. Mind you, only Naruto could perform a miracle like this. To unite a war torn land in such a short time, and turn it into the most powerful country on the continent, that truly is a great feat, Kuranai stated, impressed by how Naruto had managed to make a powerful ruler. Thinking about it, he really would make a great Hokage if he was given the chance. Not only that, he also has the Kayubi under his command and the people themselves look ready to die for him if he asked. Loyalties like that is something we shouldn't take lightly, Shino spoke, and both older ninja couldn't help but nod in agreement. Because he gave them something many haven't known in their entire lifetimes he gave them peace, said Sakura she read up on the history of the western nations the wars fought here became no as the warring states era. Suddenly they heard a roar in anger, and turned to see Kiba standing up and punch the wall, hard enough to cause his knuckles to bleed. One of the guards looked in on them hearing the racket and seeing Kiba bleeding knuckles throws a roll of bandages at him telling Kiba not to get blood on his nice clean dungeon floor before going back to the poker game going on. Damn, I haven't felt this bad in all my life, he growled out, as he wraps his hand. I mean, I thought he was the Kayubi that was what my mom said after Naruto's secret got out. But after seeing both of them at the same time, 
and seeing how she was holding back when she punched me damn it. Kiba collapsed to the ground Kyubi punch could have easily smashed his head like an overly ripened melon. Kiba we made him this way, Sakura managed to say, still upset by what had happened. It's all our fault. I used to blame him for bringing Sasuke K. I meant Sasuke back like he did, but now I realized he had no other choice. And I didn't see that because I was blinded by the fear of what he contained. Looking at her former teammate, hatred in his eyes, did she finally realize what she had done to him she also realized how she never treated him with kindness only with her fists. Now she wished that she could go back in time and be there for Naruto for all those years. Sakura had an idea maybe she can indirectly make it up to Naruto until now thinking back to their meeting with him whenever he gazed at Hinata his eyes became less cold. Hinata didn't say anything in the conversation, as she was still trying to pull herself together after the incident with Naruto. She wished now that she had confessed to him much earlier, and cursed her shyness. She also wished that she went with Naruto, but she knew if she did that, then her father would not stand for it. She now believed that he hated her like all the rest. She was brought out of her thoughts by a comforting voice. Hey Hinata. She looked up to see Sakura smiling down at her. Don't be upset, I'm sure Naruto doesn't hate you. You are the only one who stayed by him remember? Hinata wiped her tearful eyes. He's got no reason to hate you. I'm sure the glares he gave was directed at us he said only one person was at his side and didn't hate, that was you so don't be so hard on yourself I would say that he still cares deeply about you. Hinata smiled at Sakura's gentle words. She now felt reassured. Pinky there is right, spoke a voice every was looking at Raven who was leaning Aegis the cell door they recognized the same woman who was with Kyubi, and unknown to them trailed from the border to the capital. Well it seems that you understand. Raven said then spotted Hinata and gave one of her rare smiles. The Shogun would like to see you Hyuga Hinata and offers his deep felt apologies to you as well for his harsh words Lady Hinata at the time the Shogun was not able to single you out from the other spies. Everyone flinched at the word spies using fake ids and papers wasn't a good idea as it had been earlier. He would very much like to see you I'll be escorting you to him. This was a shock to Hinata. Naruto wanted to see her? Maybe Sakura was right. Hinata got up and quickly walked to the cell door. Raven motioned for the guard to unlock the cell door the guard unlocked the door and allowed Hinata to get out, before closing and locking it again. How do you keep yourself from being detected? Asked Kakashi it was bugging him how did this western ninja manage to remain hidden for so long. Raven stopped and turned her head looks at Kakashi. A ninja always finds ways. Spoke Raven and Kakashi felt a kanai aegist his face held by a pale grey hand that seemingly came from his own shadow the hand retracted as Raven pulled her hand still holding the kanai from the sleeve of the robe she wore the Nara never had such control over shadows. Refined though constant war western ninja jutsu surpass any jutsu and bloodlines from Konoha stated Naruto. Thought everyone as Raven escorted Hinata to Naruto. It's like a sleeping dragon, muttered Sakura. Anyone who faces the Empire of the West would face a well-trained and war-hardened army now the only way for Empire of the West to even get involved is if Iwakumo and Otto tried something with the Empire of the West and pissed off Naruto to the point of him bringing the might of Empire he forged down on them, no was that stupid right? The Imperial Palace both young women walked towards the Shogun's private rooms Hinata stopped she was reminded even if she wanted to stay the seal on her forehead caged her right to choose, I'm I'm sorry B but I wish to return to the cell spoke Hinata not waiting for Raven to respond Hinata turn around back to the dungeon. Raven blinked at this then went to grab Hinata wrist, oh no you don't missy you're not running away now, thought Raven. Hinata felt a hand grabbing her wrist she was unprepared to be spin around and pined to the wall by Raven who had one hand holding both of her wrists ages her chest the other brushed aside the hair on her forehead that hide the birdcage seal hidden from everyone only Kurinai knew. She knows, thought Hinata feeling Raven's hand brush aside her hair. I know everything, spoke Raven making Hinata eyes widen before tearing up, then you know I can't stay I wouldn't hurt Naruto I love him so much he he ss should forget about me it's my fate to be unhappy and unloved, Hinata's lower lip tremble. I don't hear this mark ordering you around will it cause you pain if you speak your mind and I don't see other Hyuga around. You're only hurting yourself and Naruto, stated Raven. Think with you heart and not this mark, Raven said and releases Hinata. Hinata stared a Raven who turns to the direction of Naruto room. Let's see if fate can be defied, 
spoke Raven and smiled she had a good look the birdcage seal it was beyond outdated her clan used a similar seal, then it hit her the thought made Raven stumbled a little, the birdcaged seal was exactly like the wall less caged seal they used on prisoners only the bloodline seal and the pain inducing segments were raised to life threatening levels ever added and they were of wrath designed. Raven San are you alright? spoke Hanada. I'm fine I just had a long day that all? said Raven Hanada nods Raven's pep talk got her going to see Naruto if it was for the last time. Naruto finished pouring up two glasses of wine when a light knock was heard from behind the door. Enter, Raven opened the door, she steps aside and allowed Hanada to enter. Naruto nods to Raven knowing she had his complete trust. Thank you Raven me and Hanada have some catching up to do. I want keep and have fun you two inches said Raven and she smirked seeing both of them have red cheeks. Naruto grumble was everyone going to make suggestions like that, most likely, as she walked down away from the shogun's quarters Raven had to tell the clan about this and get some payback. You look very beautiful, said Naruto making Hanada. Eep, looking at her feet, I it's good to see you again and Naruto-kun. She spoke silently, but still loud enough for him to hear. Said blonde smiled more than he had ever smiled in a long time. Hanada still cared about him. Both sat down on the couch, care for a drink, said Naruto offered a glass and Hanada she kindly took it from his hands, and tasted the sweet liquid with a single sip. Looking down at the floor, I understand that you had TT to be harsh. Said Hanada Raven told her why he had to do that to her and reasons. I'm deeply sorry Hanada Chan, said Naruto before taking another sip, for doing that to you and also sorry that I never got time to spend some days alone with you. If I had been he 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 not so thick in the head as Kayubi after stated for me realized sooner how you felt about me, maybe I would had a friend then when we were older I would have asked you out on a date. Mind you, that offer's still open. If you are interested. Hanada was both deeply surprised and happy at what she just heard. Naruto did harbor feelings that were similar to her own. But, remembering that she had to do something when she got back to the village, Naruto quickly saw the downed look on her face and became quickly concerned. I street till love you, but, said Hanada, it's not fair, it's not fair, she repeated in her mind, seeing this set off warning bells in Naruto's head. This must be the problems Raven spoke of. What's wrong Hinata chan? Tears began to form in the girl's eyes, making Naruto even more concerned about his very precious person. He stood up from the couch he sat on, and walked over to sit beside Hinata. Then he wrapped his arms around her in a comforting manner, which she quickly obliged as she cried onto his chest, finding much needed comfort in his arms. I've been forced in AM marriage with a son to a very powerful noble I don't like, because my clan wants more influence, whispered Hinata and pressed her head into his chest more not wanting to leave him. Naruto's eyes narrowed they always hurt her in some way, shape or form. Now what they did was going too far in his eyes. I'm going to destroy them and mount their heads on pikes. But to his shock, Hinata wasn't finished. They also did this, she lifted her hand up and revealed to Naruto her forehead. And to his horror, revealed what she bore. The caged bird seal they put this seal on me and shoved me into the branch family. They claimed that I was too weak to lead the clan, and my feelings for you would bring dishonor to them. When I returned they will ship me off with a few other women some main branch and the elders to the noble's land to preserve the Hyuga clan on top of that the elders might sample me too. Naruto's temper was raging by now but he forced his anger down he will get the last laugh there was no way he even allowed some little prick noble and those prevented old men touch Hinata. Then as shogun I will protect you and remove this duty from your shoulders spoke Naruto. Lifting Hinata's head up by cupping her chin with his fingers, he gave the tearful girl a gentle, love-filled smile. Going though twenty hand seal Naruto hand became engulfed in blue fire and with the other hand lifting the fringe of hair on Hinata's forehead, with his other hand he pressed two fingers onto the center location of the branch seal. He spoke only a single word. Release, Hinata felt her brow burn but as quickly as it started the burning it disappeared, what? Ask Hanada rubbing her brow and hoped that Naruto didn't do something to the seal. Come over here, he asks and helps the very confused woman up and steered her to a mirror. What did you do to the seal? Asked Hanada but look right at her reflection. She gasped in great shock at what she saw. What seal? He asked with a humorous tone. The caged bird seal was no longer there. Hanada for one was too shocked for words. Naruto's smile got bigger. 
Being a SEAL master has its advantages. Adding the fact that this SEAL is out of date and you didn't forget about Kyubi is no longer sealed in me already besides getting Kyubi free, that SEAL was easy to remove. Hanada dumbly nodded she was too much in awe to say anything. She was free as a bird she was once more free to fly up to the sun free from the curse of the caged bird. Hanada turns to look up at Naruto. I am free but Abi but what do I do now? Naruto smiled and leant in, causing Hanada to blush more than she ever did before at how close they were, only a few centimeters apart. She felt his arms encircle her once again, she gasped as his hands rubbed her bottom and the smile became on of deviousness. Why don't we worry about that later? He spoke in a seductive whisper, and with that he closed he distance, leaving Hanada in sweet bliss for having her long-time dream come true. Oh oh my whispered Hanada was guided to Naruto bed as she was relieved of her coat followed by several other parts hers and Naruto's clothing most notable Hanada's bunched up panties and Naruto's boxers. Hanada was going to like getting this kind of bliss. Early hours of the morning Hanada was awakened by the rays of the sun shining though the windows. Hanada stretched her upper body letting the covers fall showing her pale nude upper body. Naruto-kun. Call out Hanada as she covered herself with the sheets and looked around for her clothes but found them gone but saw a lovely lavender kimono with matching slippers and a pair of bra and panties. Naruto most likely had them cleaned but gotten her something to wear after she found a note say Naruto had to do somethings and would be back later. After dressing Hanada decide to nose around Naruto private rooms it had a mix of old and new, taking note of a large closet. She opened the double doors and gasps before her sat a suit of samurai armor the helmet crest had been shaped like fox ears and the face mask is shaped like a fox's snout the entered samurai armor had black and orange colors hanging behind the armor as the same brunt orange sleeveless overcoat Naruto wore yesterday. Tracing the mask with her hand her eyes wander around. On the sides were ceiling and storage scrolls ninja and samurai weapons then she saw a rack of tri-pointed kanai along with a long kanai like sword and a broad sword that made her shivered. I want to use this weapon but don't want to, Hinata thought as she felt its aura she tried to fight the pull of drawing the broad sword but the kanai sword own aura blazed shaking Hinata out of the trance she was in. What was that, thought Hinata as she held her hand close to her chest. I wouldn't touch that broad sword it tends to draw unprepared spoke Kayubi startling Hanada. I'm sorry I shouldn't have noise around, spoke Hanada Kayubi chuckled as she moved to close the closet. MMH. Well it seems both swords approved of you only the pure of heart can let the dragon's swords fire and one of strength of will contain the blade of the demon king. Hanada saw both blades auras glow a fiery aura came from the dragon's sword and a purple mist like aura came from the blade of the demon king. I'm not that great, muttered Hanada but Kayubi pinch her, Ow why did you do that? Then stop putting yourself down leave the old Hanada behind in the east or I'll give you such a pinch. Kayubi threatened and with those claws Hanada would feel those pinches for years. Alright but why does Naruto have such weapons? asked Hanada. It's long story have you ever heard of the demon king of the west? said Kayubi as she tells Hanada the story of how Naruto gains both blades. Later the team from Konoha had assembled themselves in front of the palace gates. Around them was a large group of samurai and ninjas that are escorting them back to Konoha. Already they were wondering what the reactions of those in the village would be when they find out that the Emperor of the West was their former demon vessel. Kakashi signed, he wasn't going to look forward to it. Are we ready? He asked everyone. They nodded and were ready to move when a voice stopped them, telling them to wait. Turning around they saw the Kayubi and Hinata walking towards them. There has been a slight change in plans. I am to escort you to the border as well. Kayubi turned to face the Konoha ninjas and gave them a cruel, sadistic, and demonic smile. This in turn caused the nin to shiver in fear. I love being me. I have to deliver a message and scare the pants off of Konoha he he he. They were defiantly not looking forward to the trip back home. Kayubi just chuckled at their reactions, as she just loved to mess with their heads, making them feel true terror. Shall we begin the journey to the border? She asked. Kakashi reluctantly nodded, and they all proceeded to walk to the city gates. All but Hinata. Kurenai noticed this and turned to the girl. What's wrong Hinata? She asked. This got everyone's attention, making them turn to the shy Hayuga. I'm not going back, Hinata said this their eyes widened in disbelief. What? Kurenai. What about the, oh? Hinata showed her unmarked forehead and had that determined look in her eye. 
Naruto must have. He is something, thought Kurinai. I'm staying here with Naruto kun. I'm staying with the person I love. But what about Konoha and your clan? asked Sakura. She knew Hinata would stay, but she needed to know her other reasons. Shino and Kiba wanted to know as well. I had been branded and married off to a noble son even if I wanted to fight I was leaving Konoha on my return with several other women a few main branch and the clan elder who would sample me no doubt ageist my will to persevered the clan. That's a joke a really bad joke, said Sakura. Both Western and Konoha in became disgusted with Hayuga. She write I was unable to say any because of clan laws and I was Hanada guardian requested by them if I did spoke out I would have been removed as her guardian. Hanada would have be left alone after the other rookies turned your backs to her after hearing her love for Naruto I may have disliked Naruto but he made Hanada happy and her happiness is more important to me, said Kurinai as she walk up to Hanada and hugs the younger woman telling her she'll miss her. As both Shino and Kiba looked ashamed but after thinking about what Hanada said Kiba got angry. You're saying those teens would have send you and several other skilled ninja with some old men so they can have their grooved on while the rest of us will die spat kiba his clan would fight to the bitter end for konoha they only send the kids and pups with the elders and pack elders to safety how noble the hyuga are remarked kayubi the disgust oozed from her mouth but there may be no war this got every from konoha to look at her the shogun had been hasty in not helping konoha he is still not sending aid but he can applied some incentive to earth and lighting county's rulers to pull in both hidden villages due to the leader of otto less than shining reputation and the loss of trade income I would like nothing more than to sink my claws into that snake's hide but I'll settle with his little snake pit get trampled by Konoha. We, oui, this is more than good Konoha will grateful, said Kakashi. They better be but probably not I know Konoha I know how it's thinks being in that village for three lifetimes. Remarked Kayubi everyone stared the fox woman Kayubi was living in Konoha when it was founded. Kayubi, called out Raven as she jogged up to the fox woman and handed her a scroll. What's this? asked Kayubi who opens it and started reading the scroll. Oh my my it must be my birthday. Said Kayubi smiled the same evil smile. That smile doesn't bold well for Konoha, muttered Shino. Roth demands satisfaction for this I sent a letter to my clan and got response moments ago and has been confirmed at the item stolen by them after killing as a Roth greatest sealing master the damage done to his major organs and chakra coils match what you knew about their fighting style, said Raven looking very angry. Did the Hyuga kill Roth Azar? asked Hanada put everything together. Getting a stare from Raven Kayubi placed a hand on the woman's shoulder. Yes Azar was killed by the Hyuga who stole and perverted several seals he made into the bird cage seal. Please forgive me, asked Hanada who got on her hands and knees her head to the ground. Forgive you. You have nothing to do with this please get up it's not right for Naruto ne. I meant the shogun's consort to bow like this I'm not mad at you just, said Raven. But your clan the Roth demands satisfaction or there will be war right? Hanada interrupted Raven. I offer myself. Hanada was stopped when a very familiar voice called out. Hanada Chan you're not taking the blame for Hyuga actions they abused and used you for too long they will have to deal with the blowback. Said Naruto as he walked towards Hanada and got her to stand up. But Naruto put his finger to her lips. You're too kind at time that the reasons I care and love you so much. Making Hanada blushed. Hyuga and their elders will be forced to face this without you, remarked Naruto. They had brought this on themselves, said Kayubi rolled up the scroll and placed it into her sleeve. I'll see to this you have my word little sister. Raven did a short bow and returned to the palace. Sakura mouthed, little sister, we'll kept your departure off long enough after all I ordered it after all. Kayubi try not to make them sweat too much and make sure you take pictures of their faces. I'll try not to have too much fun shall we? said Kayubi and offered her arm to Kakashi who heisted a little for fear of losing his book holding arm. Be very well Kayubi sama, said Kakashi I'm going to die I'm going to die I'm going to die, he thought as he takes a hold of her arm and Kayubi locks her elbow with his. So is that crater in the mountains still there I never taken the time to see my handy work up close. Konoha was going to love this thought the Konoha ninja leavening two former comrades behind but taking along the greatest walking disaster that had befallen Konoha years after its founding. Can I see what's under that mask Kakashi kun? asked Kayubi a bit too sweetly for Kakashi liking. It better not be another mask. Greatest walking disaster ever, thought Kakashi. 
a young tan girl with orange eyes, lime green hair wearing a off-white mid-drift sleeveless shirt and short skirt with mesh netting shorts and top on her arms were a pair of arm warmers, around her right arm is the symbol of Takigakure no Sato was taking a short break. She had been on the run for weeks only stopping to eat even then she barely had time to even do that, even with sevens sending extra chakra her body could only be pushed so much. Fu I can still feel them behind you need to hurry. Fu's eyes widen with fear. Shit why can I be left alone? Said Fu. They want me you're just something to hold me in. Fu was already jumping though the trees but ahead of her a clay bird dived down and exploded, with a scream Fu had been thrown to the ground. Uh just give up girly yay. Seven tails you prove a bit of a problem for us think that heading west would save you the nine tails will be captured in due time. Rolling to her stomach Fu stare at both Akatsuki. Get up Fu get up now Fu do you want to die? Maybe this was meant to be I can't go on I'm not strong enough, dropping her head closed Fu her eyes and awaited her fate. Three kanai embedded into the ground in front of the two Akatsuki. You're trespassing and I highly doubt this young lady here likes being in the company of the likes of you, a female voice spoke. Uh hey who the heck are you yay, shouted Didera. What? whispered Fu looking at the backside of a dark blue cloak of someone who was protecting her, this wouldn't matter those two just have to say I'm a demon to get anyone to back off, thought Fu it happened before it only ended with herself on the run again. Uh that girlie behind you holds a demon yay, said Didera smirking anyone who tried to the seven tails would shun her like she had the plague. The woman looked was silent for a moment before shaking her head, you mean she's a Jinchuriki a host to a biju doesn't make her a demon heck demons would be a bit insulted of a Jinchuriki being called a demon. Taken off guard for a moment both Akatsuki got ready to kill this interloper, then let me put this way back off or we will kill you and anyone related as a warning to anyone who dares to stand in Akatsuki's way, stated Sasori. I'm been threatened by the worst of the worst and fought them you think I would back off not happening, said the woman her chakra began to rise at a high rate. What a fool! grunted Sasori as he sent out his bladed tail at the woman and removes her head, only for the body to implode into a cloud of smoke. A shadow clone I thought the nine tails and Konoha used the jutsu, said Sasori. Akatsuki had very little intel on the west seeing as the Akatsuki main goals were in the east but after the nine tails drop off the map the Akatsuki was trying to make contacts and underbid the local ninjas like they had been doing in the east. It wasn't as successful as they had foreseen in fact it failed every province had a dedicated ninja and samurai protection and doing requested missions as long as it didn't clash to harm the empire as a whole, added impossible to forge mission papers to the shogun hearing about Akatsuki reputation had banned them before they got a foothold in the west any agent they had in the west were killed or imprisoned long ago, like the shogun had grudge ages the Akatsuki. This had forced Akatsuki to rethink its normal tactics for more direct action like sparking unrest to killing government officials and take out a few clans, so the empire would have to rely on them but for the meantime Akatsuki would hunt the Jinchuriki. Uh, said Didera looking around for the woman only to feel a presence is behind him, behind me, Didera. Shadow reaping blade, said the dark blue robe woman who draws a collapsible sickle in one simple move the weapon extends out and removes Didera arm. Og shouted Didera at the lost of his arm he quickly created a clay bird to, to get some height only to see the woman making hands seals only to dodge Sasori stinger. You're very skilled you will make a fine puppet for my collection, remarked Sasori lashing out his metal stinger, taking care in not to damage his next puppet too badly. I think I'll pass, remarked the woman as she deflected the stinger with her sickle causing sparks to fly. Sasori replied to that was a barrage of needles fried from a pair of long drums the puppet ninja had summoned followed up by a volley of kanai with explosive tags tied to them a large explosion rocked the entire area and sent birds fleeing of miles. Fu was trying to get up as both Akatsuki were fight with the woman another person came towards Fu. Can you move? The now identified woman with light pale grey with purple shoulder length hair and dark purple eyes with two red and black tattoos on both cheeks checks dressed in a tight black shirt with no sleeves the seven tailed jinchuriki wounds. Fu stare at the teen who seem a few years younger than her, why are you helping me what's in it for you? It's the right thing to do no one has the right to hunt a person down, said the woman. As the woman was helping Fu up when an explosion right behind sent them flying though the air Fu landed hard on her wrist breaking it, Fu out a strain whimper and held her broken wrist close to her chest. 
The other woman landed on her back, thankfully her armor saved her from much of the hard landing. I am going to be sore after this. The woman muttered rubbing her head. Shaking the cobwebs from her head the woman checked on Fu who was in large amount of pain. Try not to move, said the woman. You should leave me here they will kill you, said Fu a little in awe she was still trying to recover from the blast while the young woman had already recovered and still helping her. Maria, what? asked Fu. My name is Roth Mara and your name is, asked Maria. My name is Fu, said Fu. Both felt a large burst of chakra they turned their heads in the direction of the burst saw a large amount of people seemly floating in the air before they seemly dived down into the forest. Fu you may not believe this I promise you we will not let them take you besides you're not the first Jinchuriki we. I meant my clan has help and those two Akatsuki may be hot shit back east I doubt they can match the lowest S ranking fighters here my mother is a high S rank near SS so that hunch back with that tail and whatever those things were wouldn't be too much to handle. Fu this woman she speaks of most likely been in more battles than your entire village put together and I seen battles in the west in days of freedom that rival the large engagements in all hidden wars put together, spoke Chomei. Fu turned to see where sounds of combat and for the first time in weeks Fu felt hope. Both felt another burst of chakra in the same area where the battle was happening both Mera and Fu saw a giant black bird appear easily batting away the would-be attackers like toys. Damn mom's taking the fight up a notch, muttered Mera before looking over to Fu, your mother. What are you doing out here anyway, asked Fu seeing was a bit too good to be true. Training you had entered my clan's training area if that explosion hadn't happened we would have never had come Arcos you and any roving guards that were out wouldn't had arrived in time. Said Maria rubbed the back of her head Fu blinked before another explosion knocked both young women back. Damn it mom! Shouted Mera as she pushes bits of trees and dirt off her body. Stop with all the explosions already. I think it was safer on the ran, muttered Chomei in Fu's head who nodded in agreement. So you finally came out of you shell of sorts. Remarked the woman her cape and hood waved in the wind. Looks like your friend has abandoned you seeing that I had removed his arm. Said the woman like it was normal like talking about the weather. He is my partner nothing more, stated Sasori. I'm more annoyed that you ruined my favorite puppet. The woman purple eyes seemly glowed from the shadow of her hood. I did a lot more than ruin you puppet seeing that you robe his hair away from from falling off, remarked the woman. Sasori eyes widen as he discover he was missing a few items. Sasori had been forced to revel his true body after his favorite puppet had been torn to pieces by living masses of shadows it had happened so fast he barely saved the scroll that held his puppets but at the cost of the scrolls holding fuel for his flamethrower and water for his water jets. Maybe it would be a good time introduce ours to one another I am Sasori of the Red Sand, said Sasori. Erla of the Roth clan mistress of shadows bandit slayer of the west, Sasori stared at the woman before removing his robe. As you can see I'm no mere bandit, spoke Sasori. What have done to yourself, asked Erla her eyes widened seeing Sasori truth form it was clear he modified himself to be a living puppet that's a new one on Erla's list. I have taken my art to a greatest level and became everlasting that will withstand the tests of time, said Sasori while his his blade arms extended out. You turned yourself in a monster and the only reason I can think of that you couldn't handle life as a human with its hardships but because of those hardships we find joy said Erla Sasori face showed no emotion but the way Sasori was looking at her she had hit the nail right on the head. I tire of this pointless talk beside you shall be witness to a jutsu that has destroy a whole nation behold secret red move performance of a hundred puppets, said Sasori and unrolled the scroll soon hundreds of puppet came out. Erla eyes widened at the sight of the puppets each one was different they looked almost human, then Erla had a very chilling thought. They're not made out of wood are they? stated Erla and there was a smell a very faint smell she knew all too well the smell of dried blood. They're my opponents who I found worthy to become everlasting art, proclaimed Sasori Erla covered her mouth to stop the bile that wanted to come out. After composing herself Erla looked at the puppet man in front of her with hate and with a little, that is an atrocity, shouted Erla. You defiled them even we ninja show some dignity to a fallen enemy body. Ninjas are tools it's a fact I only using them like they were in life now please die, said Sasori and opened up a panel on his chest chakra threads came out by the one hundreds and each one attracted to their own puppet. The skill of a puppet user is determinant by the number of puppets they can control, said Sasori. 
Erla began to counter-attack shadows around her lashed out impaling slicing and crushing puppets. I battle Aegis numbers before and I'm still standing, said Erla as she spins her weapon and sliced another puppet. Who it's pointless all the weapons they wield are coated in my special poison, which would kill the victims after three days of painful paralysis, stated Sasori. Lone blade cut across her shoulder tearing the fabric of her cape to show dull gray metal. Seeing this she needs some space Erla made one handed hand a ball of shadow rises up from the shadows soon the shadow ball shot out tentacles destroying puppets as they came. You're right it is pointless. Said Erla then she bit her thumb and smear blood across her palm putting her hands to get her Erla a short run of hand seals. At this point Sasori had already sent his puppets at the Erla but it was too late. Summoning Jutsu shouted erla slamming her bloody palm down a web array formed followed by a exploding out rush of white smoke crossed arms standing atop a giant crow now here's a trick we pick up from the toad sage and gamabuta toad oil boiler i don't have the oil but i got the fire steel knight i need some wind at once mistress the summons gained some high before let loose wind torrent of hell shouted erla the crow flap its massive wings creating tornado force winds that easily picks up the hovering puppets into vortex as erla throws open her cape releasing hundreds of exploding tags that were taking along by the wind into the vortex with the puppets erla watches the spinning mass of puppet parts tags and wind before snapping her forefinger and thumb together burn said erla An explosion rocked the area for a second time causing a few trees to fall over from the powerful blast even from where both Fu and Mera were both blown back by blast wave as for Sasori all of his puppets were gone as the wind had picked up the scroll into the maelstrom before the tags detonated as Sasori was thrown back by a gush of wind follow up by a black talon pining him to the ground before Sasori could even try to escape Erla was already on top of him and stab him where he had compress and stored his internal organs with her staff's bladed end. How did you know? said Sasori feeling blood drain from his core. I fought a man who had sealed his own organs in same way you had done," said Erla and gave a hard twist causing more blood to come out making Sasori jerked. It wasn't hard to see it on your chest was a blaring weak point. How foolish of me to have underestimated you or maybe I wanted to die as a reminder I was still human," said Sasori the gears inside his puppet body slowed down. We are all human behind the mask that is ninja," said Erla Sasori nodded understanding. As a reward for beating me, even if you only delay this, said Sasori, Erla eyes narrow. Fu bit back a scream as her wrist was popped back into place before a splint was made. This should keep it straight. How fast do you heal? asked Mera. Bearing anything major a day at most, muttered Fu bit her lip a little as pain flared from her writ as Mera tied the bandages. A lot slower than Naruto's healing ability, remarked Maria as she finished tending to Fu's wounds. Fu head shot up and looked at Maria, you know Naruto. Yes she doses do I but for now we need to leave right now I got information that the shogun need to be made aware of, said Erla as Steel Knight pushed his way though the mass of trees. Erla looked at Fu, you're not afraid of heights are you? No, said Fu as she eyed the large summons who looked right at her like she was a worm added the fact that Shichibi didn't like birds because they like to eat beetles. Why did it have to be a bird? muttered Chomei while Fu remembered to see if she could find a replacement nest her original had been killed off by a poison mist from the hunchback even now she still mourns at their lost. Mom what are those rings? asked Mera seeing Erla stare at two rings she held in her fingers. More than rings, replied Erla as she studied the rings, these are part of a sealing jutsu to remove biju from a jinchuriki and without them it will take longer to unseal a biju. Mera gave her mother a look. This fujutsu is very cruel it destroys the host chakra much like a miner using a shiftier to look for gold to get at the bijus or any kind of thicker chakra. Erla spoke, clearly the Akatsuki cared little about the jinchuriki. Mara frowned as Fu gulps seeing the Roth clan leader held her death her hand. Don't worry I only wish to study them besides this removes an important part of their plans, said Erla picking up on Fu's worry. I don't know you so I can't really trust you, said Fu. How can you not our actions speak louder than words? said Erla and offered her hand to Fu, who slowly raised her own hand to grasp Erla's. She speaks wisely Fu besides you got lucky seven with you, said Chomei, about time it was good luck, hey. Okay I would like to ask for sanctuary, asked Fu. Granted now let get going the shogun has to be informed, 
stated Erla her eyes scan the around the area. I don't feel safe to send a message to the clan. Erla said she feels something wasn't right but had been unable to pin down what was wrong. A large fly trap rises up from the earth as a swirl distorted the air next the fly trap and a robed man with the orange swirl mask coming though watching the large summons fly away. That woman had taken the rings, that theft I say kill her then eat her, said the fly trap. What a bad girl I think Toby should be a very bad boy in return, said Toby having found Didera arm. I didn't tag any of them, the lead bitch had them already on that bird. Good thing Toby had played hid and seek here once, said Toby soon red cloud was coming to cast its shadow over the land. After a week of sleepless nights they arrived at Konoha gates and this time the Konoha team learned that Kayubi had a wicked sense of humor Kurunai was spared from Kayubi pranks aside from the troops. When asked why spare Kurunai from her wrath Kayubi replied, she may have hated Naruto once but she did raise Hinata when she was cast aside and done good by her. If Kurunai hadn't Kayubi had something planned for Kurunai that involved tentacles in mind lots of tentacles. Kurunai shuddered at the thought of being the main star in one of Jiraiya more unusual books. Sakura looked haggard her hair stuck out everywhere she attempted to wash the glue out but wasn't able to get all of it, she had to wait tile after giving her report to take a long hot shower. Kiba and Akamaru looked very subdued but looked ready to snap at the same but jumped at the sound of a cat that had meowed. Shino looked well less Shino like and leave it at that. Kakashi looked ready to comment suicide after having to read a yaoi book where she got it he didn't or even want to know. Kayubi was in a good mood. She wore a cape with a hood and a blank anbu mask to hide her looks it wouldn't be too good if she caused mass panic, yet. Now remember don't say anything about me or Naruto, whispered Kayubi. I want them unaware for Maxim shock effect. We understand. Side Kakashi Konoha was in for a shock as he reported in on the mission to the gate guards. Do not threat Kakashi kun, I'm not going on a killing rampage, I may have to hurt a few. Kayubi trailed off, it didn't fill Kakashi with hope. Walking down the main street, many ninjas and village stopped and looked at Western delegation and started whispering. Finally, reaching Hokage Tower, Anbu told them that the Hokage was in a meeting with the two councils. Perfect spoke kayubi she didn't to run all over the place now everyone important that she needed to see were all in one spot i feel sorry for the two councils muttered kiba to shino who nodded as the group was directed to the two council cambers kayubi only remarked was they remodel kakashi you're back i trust that the shogun can help us asked tsunade hopeful homura kaharu and danzo looking at kakashi then to the mask person beside him a woman judging by the height but the cloak hood and the mask made impossible to be sure. The Shogun of the West wasn't too pleased when he found out about our team entered his empire or the fake ids and papers my team used to enter the capital of the empire and we had to spend the night in the dungeons, said Kakashi. Tsunade face fell this wasn't what she wanted to happen. So your team fail no doubt my useless daughter's fault, said Hiyashi. Hardly, spoke the mask person now know to be woman. And who are you? snapped Hiyashi he actives his Byakugan but cried out in pain holding his head. What happened? asked a civilian. I don't take too kindly at intimidation tactics and to answer the man with those white eyes I'm the Empire of the West's envoy and the Shogun's trusted advisor. The envoy coolly stated and lets go of the hand seal she made from under her cloak. Why are you here then Junin Kakashi stated that Empire of the West's will not help Konoha, spoke Tsunade. The war here between your villages doesn't threaten the empire so the shogun's stance is that the empire will not send military aid, started the envoy but was cut off. Why not surely the shogun knows the gains in helping Konoha conquer her enemies and the spoils that can be gained? Spoke Danzo appealing to what he thought was a warlord turned shogun. So who is the Hokage? asked the envoy sounding annoyed. Tsunade, replied Danzo. So she should be speaking to me said the envoy tilting her head to the right as if she was talking to a child. Yes but it doesn't matter, rebuffed Danzo making Tsunade mad. So your role would be then him? The envoy question? Advisor to the Hokage. Danzo answered. Are all Easterns as confusing as you then I'm an advisor but I don't talk for the Shogun I advise not speak for the Shogun and speak for him when he is not present. The envoy stated making her guards and parts of the two councils chuckled at Danzo who realized he was dup into talking like a fool. How dare, shut up Danzo, 
snapped Tsunade cutting Danzo off and sent a glare to the rest of the two councils. After Danzo had settled down being browbeaten by Tsunade, what is the shogun willing to help Konoha besides military aid? Trade embargo it will hurt them a lot faster than it would hurt the empire and can be lifted quickly enough after the talks are finished bearing any outside interfere, the envoy spoke curtly. Tsunade and the two elders nodded even Danzo had to agree a trade embargo both hurt lighting and earth would curial Iwa and Kumo leavening Otto all alone. Ah I see, said Tsunade nodding but one of the civilians on the council stand up not understanding, what kind of help is trade going to do we need soldiers and weapons not knickknacks. Raw iron ore are not knickknacks both lighting and rock ships the ore to the empire who can refine the ore into steel which we then sell back to lighting and rock. Now what can steel be used for, stated the envoy. Ah, said the civilian. Weapons it's easier to ship raw ore than to refined locally lighting and rock only have to pay half the amount to get high quality steel they would normally get going to fire to have refined you troublesome idiot, muttered Shikaku. Why should we sell them steel of good quality to our enemies that they can use to make better weapons to use on us, shouted another civilian. That way of thinking is what started this little mess. Steel isn't used only for weapons many building projects in both lighting and earth had failed because of poorer quality of steel used causing many deaths, steel sold to them by fire. Seeing as Konoha who made the suggestion to the fire dimyo, said the envoy. What? shouted Tsunade slamming both hands down on the table, you're telling me Konoha is at fault for the impending war with Otto Iwa and Kumo. See your reaction you didn't know, said the envoy then thought for a moment, Otto is Konoha enemy and seeing the opportunity to get two major villages with long-standing feuds with Konoha on its side, said the envoy. If had been known this may have been resolved without the empire getting involved. Not that I mind at least Naruto happy with Hinata I got to make sure Konoha understands that they can't bully the empire hehe this will be fun, thought Kayubi. You're damn right I didn't and I'm sure the fire daimyo would have seen that would cause trouble fuck, shouted Tsunade and banged her fist on the table. Naruto did hate the place and knew about this problem and wasn't able to justify military actions in fact Naruto was actually waiting for envoy from fire or Konoha but Konoha entered the capital using less than trustworthy means. Unless he was under a genjutsu or was lied to after my business here is done I will inform him and informed his counterparts in earth and lighting. The shogun rules the empire as a whole with the daimyo rule their lands under the empire's banner still maintain their own armies and fund ninja and samuari clan. The shogun had to deal with daimyo's usual in fighting to clans started something with their old enemies over what happened a 100 years ago. Having to deal with the hidden villages crap is not a good way to get on his good side I believed in cleaning house with new fresh blood it would do Konoha and fire a world of good, if the old guard don't like it a kanai would work just as good, the envoy said making some pale seeing Tsunade drummed her fingers in thought, and overbearing clan heads too, added the envoy, making a few clan heads glare at her. So that's why he was so hostile, said Sakura thinking that Kayubi was billed. No he is that mad at Konoha for what they did long before this happened, replied the envoy making Sakura hang her head down in shame. Konoha hasn't wronged the shogun why would he hate Konoha and for that matter where is my daughter, I was just informed she hadn't arrived my clan compound, demanded Hiyashi a ninja had given a note from the elders that his daughter hasn't arrived or had even entered the village. She is with the shogun after having found out the area less, ah oppressed no, ah boxed in no, ah less bird caged like the shogun founded the lock easy to pick, said the envoy, making Hiyashi pale before his face twisted from shock to anger he attacked the envoy striking dead center making her double over the western ninja and samurai reacted and Konoha Anbu moved in surrounding the group from the west. Hiyashi do you know what just did? roared Tsunade but Hiyashi shout back, be quite this is Hyuga clan business the empire has taken the Byakugan as its own Konoha must send hunters to the west to kill that traitor daughter of my as for this I just sending them a message. Hiyashi finished and got up from his finishing stance or tried to but found his hand in iron vice grip. Hiyashi I think you should start begging for mercy but I doubt you'll get any, warned Kurenai, but really hoped Hiyashi was going to get it. Kurenai what are you talking about, yelled Tsunade but felt a rise in chakra from the envoy. Who are you? whispered Hiyashi his Byakugan wasn't being blocked now he can see red chakra coils a hand reaches up to the mask and removed it halfway to show a blood red eye with a black slit. 
It seems I'm going be apologizing to Lady Hinata on my return but what after knowing your intent on knowing her newfound freedom I don't think she would, spoke the envoy, and to clarified Konoha misdeeds to the shogun who is well known by the people of this village and the slights done to him. Who I freely pledged my loyal after freeing and granting me a body of my own you all know me very well. I am known to the empire of the west as Belheim at times but to the east my name is feared by all with one swish of my tails I can level mountains and cause tilde waves. The envoy throws Hiyashi back to the now scared shitless council. Ripping off the cloak to reveal a blood red haired woman with her normally hidden ears and tail out red chakra formed around her adding to her tail, two then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hello Konoha I'm back. As evil smile graces the woman's face. Kayubi. Whisper Tsunade at the now unmasked demon fox. Her chakra had receded everyone held a bated breath as Kayubi pulled out something black from behind and put it up near her face the click followed by a flash that caused cries of surprise and fear. Back to the western empire capital sitting in an open air tea shop Hanada watched the crowd somewhat daydreaming. Hanada was still a bit overwhelmed at the 180 her life has taken she was a branch house Hyuga doomed to arranged marriage to a noble and would most likely be by dirty old Hyuga elders to being reunited with her true loved had made love and who happened to be the ruler of empire. If Hanada was a gold digger she would have hit pay dirt. She would miss Konoha but there wasn't anything to tide her down there, her sister used the seal on her saying she was her better the seal now proves it and laughs at her pain. Thinking about that Hinata wished she had beat her little sister her so-called father had arranged the marriage, pretty much killed any feeling to him she had left and everything she wanted was right here. Hinata, Hinata, said Raven shaken Hinata from her thoughts. Sorry I was just thinking you were saying something, Hinata sips some tea. You told me that your good diplomat skills were second to none, asked Raven turning her teacup with her fingers. Yes. I've been asked by Naruto to ask you if you like to fill in for Kayubi when her fox yoki mating cycle kicks in. Raven bluntly stated causing Hinata to choke on the half-eaten rice ball and tea she was washing down with Raven patted Hinata's back a few times. Kayubi what cycles? said Hinata, wiping her mouth. Ahahe Kayubi mating cycles you know in the East yoki oni and demons are very rare but here you don't need to look very hard to find one said raven and she point to several wolf cat and bird yogi they looked human save for the ears and tails as they mulling around and even one of those tall brute like ogres pulling a cart with wares that he was selling wow i never really noted muttered hanada you said something about fox yogi mating cycles after saying that caused a passing wolf yogi to laugh and turn to the pair you never heard how wild they get they when their cycles kick in they screw anything with two legs even four legs if they're horny enough but why settle for scrawny fox when you can get a full male wolf? Said the yoki with a grin, making Hanada a bit uncomfortable tile raven grabbed the yoki's shirt and blasted him with rightist's female killer intent, RFKI. Back off, said raven holding a kanai to the yoki's throat as the man saw the hidden weapons raven carried. The wolf Yoki left with his tail literary between his legs and his ears pressed aegist his head. Thank you I was bit off guard I'm still not used to everything that has happened, Hinata smiled. It's okay if you want I can be one of your bodyguards Naruto hasn't told you yet, asked Raven. He did say something but I'm a chunin with element jutsus under my belt added my fighting style I can take care of myself, Hinata declared in high born tone. I never said you can't fight but a lady of a house has cartel of bodyguards Naruto has them to but normally Kayubi act as his bodyguard, only the most powerful demons would have any chance in getting at Naruto added the fact he was a warlord you don't get that rank without getting in the thick of believe me I seen his inaction, but I'm getting sidetracked we watch out for danger and act as advisors be your friends if allowed it. Of course you can my friend, shouted Hinata getting a few stares, Naruto didn't order you did he? She asked she didn't want to be treated like a glass doll. Settle down I'm not ordered to be your friend you're a good person and you made Naruto my brother truly smile in years he only did it once when my mother made him and big sister Kayubi part of my family and of the clan. Said Raven rubbing the back of her neck. I always wanted another sister besides my twin would love you and so will my mother. I honored thank you, said Hanada and she hugs Raven. So sister when do you need me to fill in for Kayubi when her cycles? A kick in. Hanada had a blush she wasn't used to talking about sex. 
mainly four times a year for about a week or two normally Kyubi gives fair warning ahead of time but it seems she has found the one in this city I feel sorry for the guy beside Naruto which you know firsthand how much EHEH stamina he has. Hanada blushed hard and had a little perverted giggle as well. You can just picture how much Kyubi has. Oh Kami I need a man in my life, spoke a now gloomy raven who was hugging her legs as she swatched down doodling in the dirt as a few rain cloud appear over her head. Oh dear, muttered Hanada as she tried to get raven out of her gloom it seems dating prospects in the west was as bad as dating prospects was in the east. In the land of water the mazukage was reminded of her lack of a man in her life, need a man, need a man, need a man. One of her aides Ao entered her office. Ow shut up before I kill you, yelled Terumi Mei. I didn't say anything this time, thought Ao thinking his cage was going to lose it like the last one but without Genjutsu that started it. Back in the capital it was night time when both Raven and Hinata returned to the palace Raven showed Hinata the city getting to know each other Hinata wonder why there wasn't any guards with them, it was a lot easier to blend in with a crowd than showing everyone that you're important soon both parted ways for Hinata was found by Naruto soon Hinata and Naruto enjoy a quiet stroll in the palace garden as they neared a pond. Naruto what did you want to show me? Well I heard when you go on a date, said Naruto with a blush this was a bit awkward for him as it was for Hinata having was easy building a relationship was hard. Ugo go on, whisper Hinata, that having a candle at dinner for two was really romantic said Naruto and reviled a small table covered with a white tablecloth with two place settings. Hanada gave out a happy squeal and claps both hands together she always fantasized about a candle lit dinner with Naruto, and she turned and gave him a kiss on the lips. Several western ninja mostly female kind gushed at such a romantic sight and started to make plans to guilt their boyfriends or husbands into doing something like that if not they will find themselves sleeping in the doghouse for a few weeks. After sitting a servant placed plates and Hinata and Naruto started to eat a made small talk, so how did your day with Raven go, asked Naruto. Very good I was afraid the bad business with, the Hyuga and Roth she wouldn't want to be near me let alone talk over tea, said Hinata. The Roth made me and Kayubi part of their clan and part of their family and didn't doubt Raven to see past that, said Naruto. She told me about Kayubi EH certain times of year I will do my best as your advisor and I would like to met the other members of my bodyguard, said Hinata. Oh that a load off my shoulders those daimyo or cut throats when they want to be, it's hard trying keep them from going at each other's like wild dogs and get them to work together and getting things done that will benefit the empire as a whole, replied Naruto. Kayubi eared of action for all her help. Hinata smiled as a servant poured some wine. As for the bodyguards Raven you may already know and her sister Maria will be your bodyguards the next one is Tachibana Ginchio she a very rare female samurai she will be in over all command of the cartel as for the others I haven't heard back from then yet. Tell me about Ginchio, asked Hanada. she very strong willed determined a powerful fighter and a believer women can be as strong as men and good with Raiden really good with Raiden. Naruto chuckled at the memory of meeting her. Is there something you're not telling me, asked Hanada. Well the thing is I fought her once and we sort of fell off a cliff when I came to Ginchio was badly wounded and I had to undress her to tend her wounds, muttered Naruto. OMMH were her breasts bigger than mine, asked Hanada causing Naruto to face slammed into the ground along with a few servants and ninjas joined Naruto in kissing the earth. Raven had gave Hanada a few tips on how to trip Naruto up when he wasn't expecting at first she thought in was a bit mean but Raven said just to keep him on his toes and having a good laugh. Hanada was giggling as Naruto picked himself up. That was mean. The servants and ninjas got up as well and returned to their spots. I know besides you wouldn't have done anything with Ginchio did you? Said Hanada in tone that said I will hurt you badly. No 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 I had to run for my life seeing as Ginchio wasn't too pleased with the undressing. Said Naruto waving his hands as he tried to tell the story. After she settled down and I got her sword away from her. I told her I save her life and by saving her life, on her Hanyuor she vowed to serve under my banner and being a clan leader the entire Tachibana clan changed sides with them on my side they helped end the campaign Aegist one of the warlords a few months earlier. Hanada nodded. Got this from Nero Angelo Sparta latest post you should cut and pass this to email or this site is going under and anyone with a fiction with a MA rating save your work or edited your hard work and add your name to the list below come people spam fanfiction support com the more of us there are the more they will have to listen move it people.
Greetings to the fine folk that moderate our site. Myself, along with many, have been writing and posting on your fine site for years now. Some of the better examples of up and coming writers out there are now suddenly finding some of the stories we've come to love at risk of being removed without the chance to even rectify our errors. For some, that means the permanent loss of a story. While I don't have anything that I believe violates your terms of use, there are those out there that are never able to recover a story in its original form. This is something I find to be almost worthy of a legal action, as while we cannot claim ownership of a character, the stories are ours and simply destroying them is something that is inexcusable. It's quite easy to simply add an MA rating, additional filters or even a simple requirement for a free membership to read the stories presented here, and would cut down on hateful anonymous reviews and posts at the same time, so I have to question as to why such a thing, in all this time, simply wasn't added. If you're worried about falsification of a registration then have an appropriate disclaimer and then there can be no dispute, you took your steps and the parents didn't monitor their children, if that is even your concern. If it is more of a personal view or desire then please at least let people know and give them a chance to remove a story that you and yours find offensive. Most people on the site are actually rather cordial when it comes to such requests. While I cannot say for sure if this letter will even reach those that may be willing to listen, and if it's more akin to a wide spectrum purge in preparation for something bigger, please understand that you are going to be losing a large number of your writers, and thus your income from a lack of readers if there is not some level of action taken to help with this situation. For those that may agree with this, please feel free to sign on and send this to the support server, maybe we can get some movement on this. Pseudocode underscore Samurai Kayubi. Whisper Tsunade at the now unmasked demon fox. Her chakra had receded still everyone held a bated breath as Kayubi pulled out something black from behind and put it up near her face the click followed by a flash that caused cries of surprise and fear. The entire room was in chaos following the flash everyone were checking to see if they had all their limbs still attached some were praying and others were trying to figure out what the hell was Kayubi out of the seal as they stared at Kayubi with fear. The guards on the other hand had to keep their laughter as for the diplomat team sighed in relief that Kayubi didn't do anything to troublesome yet but had the feeling this was only the beginning. Kayubi on her part was simply smiling at every as the camera she used disappear within the void of her sleeve, the look your face is so priceless, said Kayubi. Kakashi sighed and rubbed the back of his head as he addresses the two councils, the team would also report that we found Naruto alive and in a very high position with the western empire. Like the court jester seeing as that fool had unleashed that damned demon and doomed us all shouted Kaharu getting a few shouts for ninja to kill Kayubi. Shut up you old fart you don't know anything. Shouted Sakura. Tsunade looked at Sakura in shock as Kaharu sputtered. Well he is the most important part of the court, said Kakashi preparing for the backlash knowing how the council would jump to their own conclusions before hearing everything. Like knowing when it would rain but forgot to take umbrella the council exploded shouted saying the shogun has been tricked by Naruto or demanding Kayubi head, before the yoki woman flared her chakra getting them to shut up. Sakura sighed and began to speak, we crossed the border and made good time in reaching the capital but we were followed by a western ninja without even knowing even Hinata we believed she was unable to spot her because the ninja masterly overshadows. Hiyashi scoffed at the clam and stated, because she was weak and a traitor. Sakura glared at Hiyashi before continuing, after entering the city we encountered Kayubi-sama you already know what happened next Hinata was taken away to see Naruto I don't know what happened between them. Kayubi giggled a little making the room stare at her, what, the fox woman asked it's like they never seen a woman giggled before. Sakura was a little uneasy, hearing Kayubi giggle last time Kayubi did that she had done things to their team, horrible things. Hanada met with us next morning and told us she was staying and her reasons for it, not that I blame her, said Sakura as she glared at the Hyuga leader who was still trying to think of a way to get Hanada and punished her for betraying the Hyuga, your clan make me sick, Sakura spat Hiyashi glared at her. I said before the shogun wasn't pleased with Konoha on how they treated Naruto in the past leading up to his banishment but he hates Cage of Odo and the traitor a lot more Naruto hates traitors but as shogun didn't want to get dragged into another war be it petty revenge and getting even thought many would gladly march even if it meant their death to just kill one of you who wronged him or his other enemies, spoke Kayubi, that's how grateful the west is. So the shogun sent you to destroy us, shouted a council member. Kayubi looked at the man, 
If I wanted to destroy this village believe me I would love to wipe out a few buildings but we wouldn't be here right now wasting time explaining to idiots like you every ninja who face me knows how easily I can, she finished making the council member back down with a whimper. Danzo had stay silent but was trying to, why isn't the eye working? He thought the power to remake village is right in front of him and Shisui eye has failed. Why are you here then Kayubi? demanded Tsunade. Kayubi bodyguards didn't like Tsunade tone as Kayubi looked at Tsunade not even taking offense, I already said why I'm here. I don't believe you for all I know that Naruto's dead and you just tricking us, said Tsunade she wasn't going to trust the Kayubi. Naruto backquote s alive and well Tsunade sama we made terrible. A mistake in brandishing him, said Shino making Shibi raised eyebrow like his son he believed Naruto was a threat because of his past treatment and his most logical course of action would to attack the village so his brandishing would allow the village time to form a plan in dealing with Kayubi chakra being Naruto primary weapon seeing his lack of skills or his short tempered nature will alienate other ninja from training him and logical prevent him from learning any other skills. In the west things are done very differently people there have more things to worry about than demons or spirits and oni seeing as is somewhat a common sight and there are a few who do prey on villages and are dealt with but the rest wanted to be left alone even a few protect the human villages within their claimed territory as long as a village doesn't do any to provoke them and it had to be something major. Truthfully there are demons, oni and a few spirits that can rival me in terms of power, said Kayubi shocking many ninja. Guess you aren't as all powerful fox you made yourself out to, said Danzo getting Kayubi attention so he can focus his eye on her and bend her will to his. Just more powerful than you, remarked Kayubi getting a little annoyed. Danzo cursed once again it was clear that Shisui I wasn't working. The only edge I have over them is my chakra regeneration, said Kayubi. Kayubi you haven't answered my question, demanded Tsunade. Kayubi raised an eyebrow. Fine then but tell me why you announced Naruto as my host and not his parentage. When Kayubi saw Tsunade not willing to give her answer, or look her in the eyes well it doesn't matter. Kayubi remarked offhandedly making Tsunade look at Kayubi. Well you see it wasn't the best time, said Tsunade. He didn't need to know we couldn't risk it, Kaharu said as Homura nodded his head in agreement. Maybe we can use this to gain a hold over Naruto if he has some pull with the Shogun we can made him get the Shogun to enter the war, said Danzo thinking he could get Kayubi resealed back into the brat then mold him into the weapon he was meant to be. I said it doesn't matter because he already knows and has what was owned to him by his parents, spoke Kayubi soon after those words left her lips all the blood left the Hokage and the elders faces. You have any idea what you have done? shouted Tsunade while Homura and Kaharu saw where this is going and knew it might not end well. I didn't told him he did, said Kayubi and thumbed to someone behind her. Jiraiya, shouted Tsunade seeing her old teammate. I always knew you were an idiot, Homura shouted. Yay yay tell me something I don't know, grumbled Jiraiya as he came though the doors and wonder what did he do now. Ever since Naruto had been banished Jiraiya became so withdrawn whenever he came to Konoha in itself was a rarity he even rarely spied on the hot springs. Hello Jiraiya, said Kayubi making the said man looking at Kayubi then sigh. Guess Konoha sent a team I knew it was a matter of time with the upcoming war seeing how bad was it, so what was his reaction? His anger made me flinch, said Kayubi, making the white haired man grimaced. Not too violent I hope asked Jiraiya. Everyone just stared as Jiraiya was talking to the freaking Kayubi instead of attacking the demon and giving up his life to seal it. A night in the dungeon and little old me tagging along on their way back high, said Kayubi as she leer at the diplomat team who shuddered at being reminded of the week of hell with Kayubi even Jiraiya shuddered one of the traits the Uzumaki and Kayubi have in common was their vindictiveness to those that wronged them or wronged the ones they care for. But it led to the freeing of a caged pale-eyed dove to be with a blue-eyed fox, said Kayubi her smirk turned to a smile. Jiraiya understood what she meant, really well good for them, said Jiraiya. This might be a good plot for my next Icha Icha book. He mutter his mood did a 180 as he takes down the idea on his notebook. Tsunade had put everything to get her her anger peaked. You knew all that time where Naruto was and didn't bring him back, shouted Tsunade. Well it would have been a bad idea I don't think the western empire would like me that much having hog tie Naruto and drag him back here, replied Jiraiya. 
I don't give a damn Naruto belongs here and to hell with the West and that fat slob of a shogun, shouted Tsunade. Watch your mouth, the shogun is a great man, shouted one of Kayubi guards Tsunade anger had a target she jumped out of her seat ready to knock the mouthy guard head off his shoulders and to hell with the back lash that was to come but Kayubi opened palm catchers her fist. You call yourself a leader show some restraint damn Naruto wasn't this bad when he was first given the mantle of shogun snarled Kayubi she stopped the little game she was playing with them hell she gave more than enough clues. The silence was golden before the room de evolved into mass panic shouting for the assassination of the shogun but Kayubi gave an loud ahem reminding them of who was with them in the same room with them. Tsunade eyes widen after hearing that, that impossible it can't be Naruto, she said as Kayubi still holding Tsunade fist, Damn free broken bones though Kayubi seen the dark blue brushed flesh on the back of her palm her fast healing ability of her Uzumaki blood infused with her chakra will heal the brushed flesh and mend the bones in a short span of time. Oh but it is he is no longer the brash, loud attitude, and acting like an idiot you think he still is I learn a lot Er Lasama by the way said to me it was a waste to allow Naruto vast untapped ability even if only a little had been shown to be wasted because of fear and what he once hold said Kayubi and pushes Tsunade back easily. Kakashi sighs then spoke, it truth the shogun is Naruto and he wasn't happy after pretty much crushing our hopes he had his guards throw everyone into the dungeon even Hinata at the but later Hinata was soon taken to see Naruto by his sister Akunoichi the very same one who followed us the border. Sister, asked Tsunade. After entering the western lands he was saved from getting killed by bandits that plagued west by local ninja clan known as the Roth clan when they found out he was the host of Kayubi and Uzumaki they welcomed him into the Roth clan. The Roth clan those bunch of ingrates they thought we had killed one of their members after having been asked to meet in this village they even had the gall to attack the first Hokage, said Homura. We though they were wiped out years ago, Kaharu stated, they were no their fuinjutsu skills that rivaled Uzumaki and their bloodline to create shadows at will it was hoped they would join Konoha but as Homura said one of their members was killed and blamed Konoha. They weren't wrong, said Kayubi, and they have long memories they weren't sure on how Azur was killed so they kept records in case something comes up seeing Naruto and myself came from Konoha I knew how Azur was killed but they needed more proof Hinata birdcage seal was that proof, so with that been said now I had to catch a Hayuga said Kayubi seeing as Hiyashi had left no doubt to rally the Hyuga and the village aged her. Everyone in the room save Jiraiya were confused as Kayubi turned and left with her guards in tow Jiraiya look at Tsunade who looked ready to break something or someone. Start talking. Demanded Tsunade. I found Naruto two years ago he was already shogun I wasn't even looking for him it was luck someone mentioned how cute the shogun's whisker birthmarks are when I was aw researching. Tsunade eyebrow ticked. After doing some digging and I sweet talked my way though to palace but Naruto must have saw me and allowed me to enter, said Jiraiya. Flashback Jiraiya was staring at a maid rear end as she dusts the room she happened to be a wolf yoki got that animal in the bed feel to them it must be the tail. Jiraiya knew about the yoki thanks to his contract with the toads, and was glad they were thriving here in the west sadly the yoki tribes in the east were wiped out in the clan wars and the first hidden war are forced off their lands by the daimyo's growing power and gone labeled as dirty and cast less or killed for being inhuman monsters. A good portion had begun to move west because of this in a time when the western lands were somewhat peaceful and integrate themselves easily because many of them were skilled workers, farmers, craftsmen bolstering the economy as the east was hit with labor storages. He guessed the warlords saw them as extra bodies for their armies even a few yoki were warlords themselves and were among the most fearsome in their times or married into a fair number of samurai and ninja clans even few became daimyos of their lands. Jiraiya shakes his head free of history now his thoughts were on other things that would be rated ma so he was about to do the Jiraiya moves on the maid, make some cheesy pickup lines then grab her ass then getting a slap to the face in return. When the door opened and Key filled the room scaring the poor maid who let out a yelp and jumped a little. What the hell are you doing here Jiraiya? snarled Naruto he didn't believe it that his back stabbing guardian was here. I guess he's still angry at me, thought Jiraiya and for once wish he called him Aero Senen. Shogun Sama, said the now trembling maid she knew he was a very kind man but she never seen him that angry before and was glad she wasn't the object of his anger. Naruto jested with his head the maid bowed and quickly left. 
He has some nerve being here after he turned his back to me when I needed him the most, Naruto thought and thinking of unleashing his legions of samurai and his hordes of ninja on the self-proclaimed super pervert, or at least the female ones after telling them about Jiraiya's hobby it will be luck if there would be a body to bury after. Not like I didn't accept he be all happy giving out hugs and kisses thought Jiraiya as Naruto walked towards him grabbing his coat and slammed him into the wall at the end of the room making a fair sized dent in the wall. That wasn't unexpected, thought Jiraiya he was surprised the amount power Naruto had now. How the hell did you find me Jiraiya? said Naruto, and why shouldn't I put a demanding on site order for every hot spring in the west my subjects do not like to be spied on by dirty old men. Jiraiya flinched at the tone and that demanding part, Naruto I won't ask you to forgive me what I did was unforgivable I can't even look at your parents in the eyes when I pass I am sure as hell your mother will kick my ass before your father would have. So you know my parents, stated Naruto still glaring at him, but still you betray me I was banished for doing my duty and for my trouble I got two holes in my chest and the backsides of most my so called friends. Naruto was yelling by this time. I heard that you used Kyubi chakra a full tale's worth I couldn't think straight your parents died because of Kyubi when I did got my thoughts together it was already too late so before your banishment date I left a scroll in you apartment, said Jiraiya. Naruto blinked, so you were the one, letting go of the Sanin who fell on his ass then got back to his feet and tried to work out the kinks from his spine while muttering about his back. Yea but old man Serutobi gave me that scroll and that letter a week before he died and told me to give it to you when turned 16 or you had gotten kicked out of the village, said Jiraiya. That made Naruto blink the old man had foreseen something like this. Damn it after hearing that it's now kind of hard to hate you, I still don't like you or even trust you that's got to be earned backed, said Naruto. But if you pull anything that put my subjects in danger I will make Kayubi's attack on Konoha look tame. That was a threat worth its weight in gold if it was money, you changed Naruto but still the same young man who will protect around him you would have made an excellent Hokage. Jiraiya nodded and went on, as for finding you well your exploits are very well no back east as the man who united the war torn west and your whisker marks are very rare seeing as there was another one with those whisker marks still going around as Naruko E.H. Naruto smirked he was going to see the look on his face when he finds out the name of the owner of the second set of whisker marks in the west. So can you not put demanding on site order on me because seeing such fine inspiration for my books around here it untapped source a rare find and would make my day really, asked Jiraiya. Naruto was about to say something when Raven and Maria entered the room and Jiraiya paled a bit and was trying to find a way out. Well maybe getting a little side trek wasn't a very good idea, Jiraiya thought cursing at the lack of windows any other exits. Something wrong you two are all red faced, asked Naruto. Big brother there was a breach in the palace we were taking a bath in the outdoors hot spring when some long white hair old man dress a kabuki player ninja had been watching us we only found him after hearing some giggling, said raven her cheeks tinted red. We nearly had him too but running around the palace grounds in wet towels wasn't something we wanted to do, finished maria bushing a bit. Jiraiya nose started to bleed at hearing, running, and, in wet towels filing the big brother info for later. Naruto was now scowling at him again and was about to lay down the law of this land down when a sexy looking red haired yoki woman with fox ears and a tail came in. Rubbing her forehead like she was having a head a ch, kid I just got word of a number of complaints about a long haired man dressed up like a kabuki player crossed with a ninja that can summon toads or some kind of toad man peeking on hot spring baths within the city all of them the female kind, you want me to hunt him down and use dear old arrow senin as a chew toy she said before spotting Jiraiya. MMH. Hummed the fox woman Jiraiya blinked at her eyes Yoki don't have silted pupils even the cat breeds don't have them nor had he seen such a bright shade of red eyes before and she looked very familiar lastly how did she know that damned nickname? Naruto just looked at Jiraiya and smiled before he answered. Raven Chan Maria Chan this is Jiraiya the super pervert, pervert meet my sisters. Maria and Raven stared at him before it dawned on them. Ah he 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 hi. Wait a sec sisters. Said Jiraiya as he stopped backing away as both sisters blinked at him before they started to put out key. Damn it, cursed Jiraiya. It's that hentai, said Maria now very angry, as her twin draws a kanai. So it is, stated Raven as they both moved towards Jiraiya. I got adopted, by the Roth clan when I first arrived in the west and they saved my life not knowing or caring who I am after hearing my life story 
replied Naruto, smiling. Oh, said Jiraiya before he resumed backing away. Allow me to introduce myself I am Kayubi, said the redhead and she smiled and counted down. Say what? shouted Jiraiya in shock that's when both twins lunged at him. You dirty pervert how dare you peep on us, shouted Maria as she started to stomp on Jiraiya. Any last words peeper, yelled Raven as she punched him and kicked him. Not the between the legs, not the between the legs, pleaded Jiraiya but his pleads went unheard or were just tuned out as his beating got in to full swig all the while Naruto and Kayubi smiled. Should we stop them, asked Naruto. Kayubi thought for a second, no. Snap, pop, og, screamed Jiraiya echo though the palace. Flashback and Jiraiya shivered at the memory because after Naruto letting the twins have their three pounds of flesh three buckets worth of blood a few bones and his right kidney Naruto explained the whole Kayubi being freed and him being not dead and all. Kayubi body was made of blood drawn from Naruto mixed with fox yoki blood making Kayubi a Uzumaki blood relation and Naruto child. Thought both were implanted and came out from Kashina but was a elder sister younger brother relationship. Jiraiya sighed it was confusing sometimes but the matter at hand. Why didn't you tell me we could have avoided this maybe even, said Tsunade but Jiraiya cut her off. Like what caused more problems for Naruto knowing some of these fools would try to send assassins to kill Naruto hell even try to seal up Kayubi most likely fail at the attempt said Jiraiya. Hearing that Kayubi stopped and turned her head, her eyes narrow at the governing body of Konoha. Because she is a weapon if she can't then, started Danzo but key on a level not felt in so many years since the night of Kayubi made everyone struggled to stand. Kayubi chakra flared around her her guards moved away from as her chakra shroud became darker that it started to burning the floor. Let's be clear I am not a weapon. I am not a pet. I am the nine-tailed biju known as Kayubi no Kitsun. My true name is I am Kurama. A name given to me by the sage of six paths himself. Stated Kurama she had limits when dealing with people who were too set in their ways or too stupid to see a threat. Any attack in whatever form will be dealt with harshly, snarled Kurama. We're done here, muttered Kurama as her chakra receded back into her and with that said she left with her guards in tow. Why didn't you say anything, said Tsunade looking at Kakashi. Well because she's the nine-tailed fox that can blow mountains into rubble and she asked us really nicely said Kakashi rubbing the back of his head, not adding the inhuman amount of Kikurama used when she asked. Let me guess, said Jiraiya getting everyone's attention, a lot of killing intent, he asked and getting a round of nods from Kakashi group. Jiraiya sighed as he ran his hand though his hair he wonder if Konoha would handle another round with Kayubi no Kurama who now has diplomat statues from one of most powerful empires of the modern ninja age. An explosion from outside the Hokage Tower was heard followed by several others, Jiraiya sighed it seemed word had gotten out Tsunade was already out the door with Shizune and Sakura right behind her. Outside the tower was a war zone Kanai were shattered everywhere along with craters and wounded Konoha ninja lay on the ground in pain but alive. It looks like a failed ambush, said Jiraiya the whole village must have felt that latest outburst of chakra adding Hiyashi spreading the word no doubt all of Konoha will try to fight Kayubi. He finished when Tsunade punched him in the face it wasn't her normal one that with one hit you go though the wall punches it meant she was really mad and wanted to yell at him before beating his head in. Why didn't you tell me you knew Konoha needed Naruto's help, asked Tsunade but backed off seeing the look in his eye. You backstabbed Naruto in the back in the worst possible way he asked me not to tell you I'm still not fully forgiven but I'm not going to betray him again said Jiraiya rubbing his cheek. There are more important things than that brought's feelings the people, started Tsunade but Jiraiya cut her off. Do you even hear what you're saying the people are morons or power hungry fools who undermine you at everything and do things that would lead to major threats that yourself and others have to deal with as the people live their happy little lives. As we ninja as me you everyone who gave up on having a normal life should be the only ones to decide in a ninja village, ranted Jiraiya. Before Tsunade could even speak an explosion was heard inside the village. In one of the many streets lining Konoha was a scene right out of a war zone while outnumbered the western samurai and ninja with Kayubi our elites were used to fighting a just large numbers of enemies. Lady Kayubi maybe it would have been better if we return with the army, commented the leader of Kayubi bodyguards as he duels with the Anbu who faltered to keep up under the samurai's blows then got two slash at his shoulders that erupted blood soon after. 
Well at the time the shogun didn't want another war nor would he be pleased to hear I was leading an invasion. Said Kayubi as she breaks a chunin's arm before mule kicking the ninja into building. Taking a look around before she dashes down the street with her bodyguards in tow Konoha knows that Kayubi is back and itching for a rematch. After a few more run-ins with Konoha ninjas, leaving their broken and impained bodies in the streets minutes later Kayubi's group arrived at the Hayuga compound and surprise surprise the gates were bar and two teams of Konoha but the real surprise they team 10 and team 9. Hey never thought I run into them guess my cruise is real, said Kayubi. One of her guards looked at her, Cruz, it's nothing just a little joke to myself, said Kayubi. Neji step forward. Demon you and misguide minions shall not pass fate has decreed it. Yosh she cannot stand ageist our springtime of youth, yelled Lee. Get ready for ass kicking demon, said Tenten. You shouldn't have returned Naruto so stop trying to fool us with that henge, said Shikamaru with Ino and Choji got ready stances. Kayubi no Kurama on her part was getting a little annoyed. Sai I thought Nara were smart to tell the difference from a kanai to a holster Taro I can handle them myself. The leader a samurai named Taro nodded. Kurama walked towards her opponents a grin formed on her face was daring anyone with the stones to attack she wasn't disappointed. Neji attacked. You shall fall to my gentle fist fate has for solid aid divination signs destructive mountain fist. Shouted Neji. Wave of chakra slams into the red haired woman who grunted a little as she was forced back. Neji already closed distant. Eight divination signs, 128 palms of the hand, one becomes two, two becomes four, eight, sixteen, thirty two, sixty four thousand one hundred twenty eight inches, shouted Neji as Kayubi body jerked with each strike. Neji paid extra attention to the area where the heart is. Karama slumped Aegis Neji hand. Failure will always fail whenever they dare overstep their bounds that is their fate, stated Neji and was about to shove Naruto back to the dirt where he belonged. Kurama started to laugh and grab Neji wrist and looking at Neji not even hurt. That drip you stout is the most pathetic thing I had ever heard fate. You know nothing fate is never set in stone you only proven you less of a man you're a dog who heals to its own weakness like a collar. Neji anger peaked and tried to attack but Kurama flared her key making him freeze up. And another thing, fate's fool," said Karama as a metal fan slipped into the palm of her free hand. "Your strength, you fellows' strengths are nothing to me. Only one can match me. Kayubi no Karama, and that's Naruto." Finish Karama as she broke Neji wrist, followed by using the close metal fan as a club started to strike Neji, repeatedly making Hayuga cry out. "Let him go, you monster!" yelled Tenten as Lee ran at Karame, who tossed Neji aside a second earlier, only move her head to avoid a kanai thrown. Dynamic entry, shouted Lee Kurama avoided the flying jump kick only to weather storm of Kanai summoned from Tenten. Iron fan shield, shouted Kurame as a second metal came from her other sleeve Kurame opened both fans using her chakra made a shield when she angled both fans to made a small round shield charka began to form a protected barriers the Kanai made sparks when they impact after the last one fell Kurame lower her arms. You really got do better than that thought your best isn't that strong, huh? Kurama then saw the explosive tags tied to the kanai as one they began to burn, you got to be kidding. Boom the area around Kurama went up in flames. Neji! shouted Tenten as she ran to her fallen teammate Shikamaru noted that the guards hadn't moved to check to see if, Tenten get away. Huh! said Tenten as she turned to see what Shikamaru wanted only to feel a hand grab the back of her head followed by a quick jerk down a second later only to feel blinding pain to her face then black. Hate those exploding notes they made me itch like crazy, complained Kurama, and scratched the side of her head then shook Tenten after giving her a brutal knee strike to her face. Out cold, tick. Just sad ninjas nowadays when this village was founded in my day a ninja could take the pain and still fight back, I can't believe I just said that, muttered Kurama. Unhand Tenten you unyouthful demon, shouted Lee. Kurama dropped Tenten and reacted to Lee's spin kick using her arm to block she easily. That kick should have broken that demon arm, thought Lee as Kurama throws off the kick only for Lee to land on the ground upright soon as his feet touch the ground Lee wince and had to remove one of his leg weights to find one bend and leaving a black burst on his lower leg. Partial multi-size jutsu. A large fist headed straight for Kurama who did a replacement with Lee who only had a moment to understand what had happened when Choji enlarged fist hit him. Choji was shocked seeing Lee get launched into a building. 
Ino sweated a little while watched Karama fan herself a little with that smile and went to move only to find herself unable to move. Shadow imitation jutsu success, said Shikamaru smirk. Way to go Shikamaru, said Ino as Choji used his partial multi-size jutsu to restrain Kayubi. So what do we do with Naruto? asked Choji. Yes that's a good question Fatso has raised. Said Kurama making Choji mad but Ino put a hand on his shoulder. That Baka Naruto is just trying to bait you. Ho oh, that wasn't a bait you skinny big mouth tart I'm betting that you turn tricks in the back alleys in itself as a wonder seeing as you stuff your bra and have little appeal. Said Kurama and was pleased to see Ino face turn red with anger. You bitch or bastard or whatever you are you going get a mind fuck up, screamed Ino. Sorry I don't sleep with flat crested tarts, retorted Kurama making Ino matter. Ino scrabble the demon's mind before its break lose, orders Shikamaru. With gusto mind disturbance, said Ino with a wicked grin as she used her hands forming the aframe seal and aiming at Kurama. Ew I don't want those tart waves aim at me ew -E -E said Kurama in a high pitch voice before going up in smoke. The Ino Shika Cho were stunned and wonder what had just happened. That was a shadow clone, said Ino, as Shikamaru and Choji looked around trying to sense where Kayubi had hidden itself only to freezes as Ki was blasted at them from behind them, then stopped letting Ino, Shikamaru and Choji move to face Kayubi she could smell the fear coming off them. I'll ask again can any of you tell the difference from a kanai to a holster, well come on. What's the point of telling us that dumb question Naruto, snapped Ino and found it hard to breath as Kurama hand were around her throat. That question has to do with everything right now, said Kurama looking amused as Ino tired to pride herself loose. Choj was keep at bay by the sharp claws near his throat, I wouldn't try your whole village couldn't handle me before and this time around there no fourth Hokage to stop me, what is even more pathetic that you think I'm Naruto a dumb loud mouth wearing kill me orange, wanting to be Hokage. People change Naruto change and I have change you are the one who remained the same pathetic selves who take things like family and friends for granted spoke Kurama as her bodyguards had surrounded them. You understand now, whispered Kurama. Shikamaru sweated and tried to think of a plan what hell were they thinking trying take on Kayubi when the entire village couldn't do it as a ninja placed a hand on his shoulder. All going to really enjoy this, said Kayubi and started to laugh a very evil laugh, how about I change your opinion, cooed Kayubi as Ino whimper. When Tsunade and Jiraiya finally arrived at Hyuga compound having been delayed from getting parts of the village under control, the sounds of fighting is heard past the destroyed main gate. Well it's not on fire that's something to be relieved about, said Jiraiya, Tsunade grunted as they both head towards the ruined gate as Tenten starts to come to only to find herself being restrained, by the Anbu that was with the Sanin, hey what what are you doing, shouted Tenten. Both Sanin stop in front of a crying Ino who was curled repeated, I'm sorry I'm sorry, over and over again. Choj was knocked out and was pinned by Kanai to a wall by his armor and Shikamaru lay face down in the middle of an array that kept him pinned but other than that looked fine, it was later Shikamaru told everyone that Kayubi thought the ground would give him perspective after staring at the clouds all day. What are you sorry about? asked Tsunade Ino looked up with a glassy look in her eyes. You're not going whisper at me too I don't want to hear any more bad things I didn't do. Tsunade went to place a hand on Ino's shoulder which she shied away from at first but then leaned enjoying the contact. It's a genjutsu, started Jiraiya and he placed his open palm on Ino's herd and made the release sign. Ino eyes became normal again, oh my head, she moaned then blinked and looked Tsunade and Jiraiya. We made the biggest mistake ever Lady Tsunade, said Ino. I say what the hell you all were thinking trying to fight Kayubi, said Tsunade. Not that for turning our backs on Naruto, said Ino fresh tears came forth. Kayubi showed me Naruto life I never thought he was so alone, and he still found the will to keep going we're the real monsters. Mirror of memory, dreams and nightmares it's a genjutsu from the west it has a lot uses some good and few really nasty uses I heard it can even put people into comas even make them kill themselves. Ino shivered as she was taken away Tsunade, stared at Jiraiya. You knew about this level of jutsu and didn't even report about it or tried to get a copy of that jutsu to counter it, Tsunade accused. Or use it ages the other villages the western empire knowing Danzo and those two old farts, countered Jiraiya. 
Well seeing that Brat sent the Kyubi to sort out some alleged wrongs done Aegis the Roth clan who fought it out with my father, stated Tsunade. And if those alleged wrongs aren't false, asked Jiraiya. I don't care it's been nearly century it won't hold any weight, said Tsunade. That why Kurama here to get things done I met with Erla she not want to let things go unpunished no matter how long it's been besides the Hyuga need to eat some humble pie, said Jiraiya. Sounds like revenge, remarked Tsunade. Just correcting a past wrong and you did take note that Kurama hadn't killed anyone, said Jiraiya. Tsunade thought about that and a shiver ran down her spine as one thought ran though her mind. Jiraiya nodded when Tsunade looked at him, she been toying with this, he replied, they call her the Red Princess for the sheer level of bloodshed when she is set loose on enemy be a demon or a human and really what's scary that Naruto and a few others could stand up to Kurama even win. Hanabi lay on her back staring up into the sky thinking back on past events. Hanabi always hated her elder sister knowing she had known their mother longer while she was only held for a few moments. That hate grown as Hanabi aged seeing how everyone besides Hanada acted like a Hyuga only enforced this hate. Hanabi was the prefect Hyuga in every way and next leader of the Hyuga she easily defeated her ex-older sister and showed Hanada her fate by using the birdcage with her father nodding in approval as always knowing she was prefect. Even when Hanada still held on to the weak feeling for a demon as a way to fight her fate as if feelings would can defied fate it only proves that Hanada was a failed Hyubi. When father had arranged a marriage for Hinata to a son of well-connected lord the clan would rise to new highs and seeing the elders look at Hinata with lust the thought made Hanabi smile. Hinata would at last know her fate maybe her children would be prefect but Hanabi had doubts. Due to a last minute mission Hinata's skills were needed so Hanabi made it a point to remind Hinata that her fate, only been delayed. After two weeks everything went to hell. Hanada team had returned ahead of time regardless if Hanada had to make a report she was to return to the compound after the mission and get ready to be sent off. First Hanada hadn't returned next father had returned to the compound saying the Kyubi had returned in human form and was head straight for them at first no one believed him but hearing the sounds of battle added weight to his decoration. And with a few monuments the main gate were kicked open. That right the main gate made from very rare iron wood infused with charka to make the door harder than steel had been kicked open and splintered like cheap firewood. As the dust settled a lone red-haired woman walked on to the compound like she owned the place Hanabi reacted and tried to attack only to have her outreached arm grabbed by the woman and flung aside. Hanabi groaned trying to get the cobwebs and looked at the growing pile of mane and branch Hyuga that lay at her feet as they tried to attack taken down by a mix of hand to hand hitting below the belt and redirecting one's attack into another making a mockery of the Hyuga famed gentle fist. Seeing her clan being lay low Hanabi felt red hot anger. How dare you commoner attack the noble Hyuga clan. Commoner that's a first time been called all sorts of names but never commoner. Said Kurama, and your clan is hardly noble I'm here to get what is owned. Said Kurama, as she advanced the end. Thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.